College Football Prime Time, presented by Hampton Hotels. Well, Auburn has beaten Clemson 13 straight times, and the visitors are determined in that streak here tonight. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Clemson Tigers file out of the locker room. A lot of their fans have followed them here. Not too long a drive. Across Georgia, the northwest corner of South Carolina. Davo Sweeney's team ready to bring it on. Meanwhile, the home team. Here come the Auburn Tigers. Take a look at the history of these two schools and Auburn with a wide margin with 13 straight triumphs. Got to go back to the 50s to the last Clemson victory. The last mini was in the 2007 Chick fil A Bowl down the road in Atlanta. Coach Gene Chizik of Auburn is standing by with our Aaron Andrews. Let's go to Aaron. Brent, thanks so much. Coach, you mentioned your backs need to take the pressure off your quarterback, Cam Newton. How will that affect the game plan for freshman back Michael Dyer tonight? Well, the bottom line is right now, if you're in a game like this, you've got to produce. Whether it's Michael, whether it's any of our tailbacks, we've got to get a run again going tonight. And it can't be with a quarterback. It's got to be with our tailback. Speaking of quarterback, we'll talk about Clemson's. You are concerned about Kyle Parker's ability to throw the deep ball. What's the key to countering that? Tonight. Well, the bottom line is we got to stop their running game. We got to make sure that their quarterback doesn't hit the big ball down the field on us. We just got to play sound defense, go out there and have fun. Thanks. Thanks All right, Brent. And Aaron, just as you say that, Kyle Parker and Clemson will have the ball first here tonight in Auburn. Dabo Sweeney spent a long time over in Tuscaloosa as a player. And an assistant coach, Muggy Knight here in Auburn. Still 89 degrees. And the humidity, though, dropping. So by the time night falls here, it's going to be real pleasant for one of these Southern Fried football games. Welcome to the part of the country where football is a religion, ladies and gentlemen. He's ready. Marcus Gilchrist, the defensive back. Unusual when you come to Clemson and not see the great CJ Spiller back there, but he's moved on to Sunday football. And there is the Eagle. Nova came out at the 17 minute mark as we wound the clock down. West Byron, record setting kicker here at Auburn. And Nova said, let's go, boys, let's bring it on. And Gilchrist will return this one from the 10, looking for field position. Is out to the 24 yard line and some serious helmet knocking goes on early. Now Kyle Parker comes out. We told you about the last time he was here, folks. First inning, it was only three months ago. He was a starting right fielder. Came to the plate with two teammates on and slammed this home run as Clemson won it 13 to 7 and eventually traveled to Omaha and the College World Series. And now here tonight, number 11 brings his offense to the line of scrimmage and Andre Ellington number 23 will open as his running back. Ellington. 
let's go back to Kyle Parker, Herbie, because 20 home runs, 20 touchdown passes a year ago. First player in Division I history to do that. And think about some of the great uh, dual sport players that we've seen over the years. Kyle Parker's a gamer, just to put it very candidly. He has the ability to make plays. In this kind of environment, he'll settle in and, and be, really feel comfortable. It's really a question of the guys around him help him out. May I mention to you one Bo Jackson from Auburn? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second down at nine from the gun. And with that draw look, close to the first down comes Ellington. We'll see where they mark it. It's a good look here. What Clemson, the strength of their team, besides Kyle Parker, is a veteran offensive line with great continuity. And, Brent, you know what it's like when you're on the road in this kind of environment. You can't always hear yourself communicating up front. And this is a good, safe play with a draw to a fast back to get the push up front, and eventually he finds the crease. And it's good for a first down as the chains move. Empty backfield. This is a veteran offensive line. And now Auburn shows pressure. And Ellington goes back for the toss. Tries to get the short side. And does. Tightrope walks down the sideline. Landon Walker was the tackle out in front of him. And there's a penalty flag down. There's a flag on the play. I'd be questioning how many people they had lined up in the backfield. This is an ACC crew with an SEC replay booth. Dabo looking now for clarification. Trying to read lips from me up here, obviously saying there's no foul. Yeah, his microphone uh, yeah. not working right now. The so they move those chains, Herbie, to the, uh, what, the 46-yard line? Yes, yeah. sir. And you see that without C.J. Spiller and Jacoby Ford, there's still a tremendous amount of speed on this Clemson offense. Jamie Harper checks in. Gets the first carry. He's more of a power back, but he does have breakout speed. How about some impact players tonight and we're going to be watching? Well, I, I think it has to start in the backfield around, around Kyle Parker. And you got to look at Andre Ellington because of the speed. And you saw it on that end around what he can do. He's a fast cut guy. And he and Jamie Harper will provide the, the speed in the backfield. And also, they're going to look outside. Jerome Brown and Bryce McNeil, the number 18 and number 7, are the go-to receivers when they got want to get the football thrown vertically down the field. They'll try to do that just now if they can. Needs 13, drops off the screen pass in underneath. Remember, Harper's got breakout speed, and he picks up the first down. Good call that time. Absolutely, Brent, because Auburn was playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage here, and the linebacker who actually is trying to lock up with Jamie Harper gets lost, and is, that's Craig Stevens, the linebacker who's been suspended, 46, who's come back for this game. He gets caught up in all the offensive linemen, and he can't get out there, there's, so there's nobody left to pick up Harper as an alley down the sideline. On first down... Handed back to Harper and cannot find a hole as Nick Fairley, and he's one of the impact players here for this defense. Yes, sir. Nick Fairley is a guy who had a big game last week against Mississippi State and really represents, I think, a big key in this game because the defensive line from Auburn has to make a difference in trying to get pressure and getting penetration. And then Craig Stevens, who got a little bit lost in that screen, 46, he's back as a senior. He's a co-defensive MVP last year. He's missed the first two games. Let's see how quick he can get back to the game tempo, the speed of the game. Ellington checks back in as the Clemson running back. Gets the call, slips the first wave, and he is short of the first down. Love to see these Clemson backs. When you can make a cut and not lose your acceleration in the middle of that, that cut, that's when you know you have some, some great speed in the backfield. And I think these two really complement each other very well. Ellington about 190 pounds, and Jamie Harper in at about 235. As a high school senior, Herbie, Ellington had 2,500 all-purpose yards and scored 28 touchdowns.
Here he is on third and two, trying to get it, and he does. Picks up the first down as he barges across the 30-yard line. So it used to be thunder and lightning as Todd Blackledge named those former great running backs, and now it's the new storm. Andre Ellington and Jamie Harper. Talked about that battle at the beginning of this drive up front with the veteran offensive line from Clemson, the speed and athletic ability from, from Auburn, and so far in this drive, you've got to give Clemson a lot of credit for controlling things up front. They have come right down the field on this Auburn defense. Out of the power eye, Ellington seizes the corner, crosses the 20, banged out of bounds around the 11-yard line by Savage, the safety. And this is an impressive opening drive. 19 more yards. And Brett, watch from the outside. The Auburn defense is slanting to the left. And I think they underestimate the speed. And Damon Washington, the corner, came in. And again, I think he was surprised to see the cutback because the play that was designed to the left, and Ellington brought it all the way back to the right. And that time, Washington, the corner, was out of position to make the play. Harper checks back in. His number. And he is more the power back. And he crosses the five-yard line. And he showed you his strength right there as Sweeney's offense is moving down the field in large chunks here. Well, that offensive line is moving people off the line of scrimmage. Do you remember this offensive line one night in Atlanta when yeah. they were freshmen uh, against yeah. Alabama? Yep. And they couldn't hold up? Yep. Well, here they are now. <laughs> all class grown up. Yeah, yep. Exactly. Mix up in the backfield and Harper can't get loose. The man who was coming around that time, Terrence Ash, collided with the exchange. And Brent, Nick Fairley, who you and I talked about earlier, is an impact player. Watch him get a push this time. See him right there? Disrupts the entire flow of that play. Fought through that time. David Smith, the left guard, and used his power that time to just show what he can do. That's what Auburn needs to do to be able to slow down this Clemson attack. Third and seven. Rolls to the three. It's that inside shovel pass. Harper breaks for the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. Zaro on for the extra point. Quarterback Michael Wade will put it down for him. He's a big rascal, his hope. Taps it on. Oh, Herbie, they go. A wonderful drive. Yeah, and Brett, the coaches told us this week that Harper may have the best hands on the team, but look at this, in, his instincts right here, the cutback against Craig Stevens, their top tackler from a year ago, and this is it, the soft hands, 235 pounds, plays designed to the left, and there's nothing there, cuts it back, and then has the speed to get to the corner. So now we'll see what Auburn can come up with. Spencer Benton will kick it off. Demond Washington. Back deep. McCaleb is just in front of him. From right at the four yard line, Washington coming out. Excellent return to the 32, and Benton the kicker. And here comes six foot, six inch Cam Newton. Big Cam Newton has tremendous athletic ability. So far, these first couple games, he has shown his ability to run the football. He's second in the SEC in rushing. I got to believe that Clemson's going to do everything they can tonight to try to squeeze this Auburn offense and try to take away Newton's ability to run and force him to throw the football tonight and see if he can make some plays downfield with his receivers. There he is in the pistol formation, and that is the freshman, number five. Keep an eye on him, Dyer. Recruited out of the state of Arkansas, and the uh, line judge wants to have a word here with the referee. They're looking at the clock. They want to straighten it up, so like they'll the, come over and get this. Well, the play clock didn't didn't really get started. That was so he's it. got an official official timeout, and now he will 
he will get it straight to go back on Newton. OK. He started his collegiate career at Florida. There was a problem and originally he was charged with stealing a laptop computer. However that charge was dropped and Newton himself chose to leave Florida after that. Obviously he was behind Tim Tebow and he wasn't going to play much. And he wandered all the way to a J.C. Blinn, Texas college where he played for Dennis Francione's son Brad. And then he led Blinn to the junior college national championship and originally he said he was interested in Mississippi State but Auburn did not give up. They kept coming and said he could step right in probably as a starter and so here is the young man who has a second chance and from all indications from everyone we talked to he's making the most of it. They had a chance to watch film with him yesterday just a likable guy the minute you walk into a room with him. Stands tall. This is what he can do when it breaks down. And there is something they've been working on. Herbie is having him dive so he doesn't take a big hit. Yeah, because he's taken a lot of hits in just a couple weeks. And of course, last week in conference play against Mississippi State on the road, he's not yet learned to get down and he's fighting for extra yards, which you like to see. You like to see, but sometimes you gotta know when to get down. Second down and seven and again I think we've got a clock problem here and you know that has to be very disconcerting to a team that wants an up tempo offense as you know Gus Malzahn the offensive coordinator for Chiswick he wants to go in a hurry he wants to move it up get the <laughs> tempo up and and you would think that maybe Clemson snuck somebody up to that clock and so we <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, that's one way to slow down Gus yes. Malzahn's offense exactly he's over there just he's got his leg twitching I mean he wants to get this offense going well there we go the game clock is going to be kept on the field that first play Newton scrambling DeAndre McDaniel who's an All-American safety on the other side number two as well for, for Clemson I think one of the things that Clemson might want to do is try to cheat him up close to the line of scrimmage almost spying him on certain down and distances to try to prevent him from making those big plays and running the football. You know his father had such a great comment about him going from Gainesville out to the middle of Texas. He said that my son went from the Hollywood of East Coast football to the middle of a cow pasture. <laughs> and he did real well in that cow pasture. He accounted for 38 touchdowns for Blinn and Dabo Sweeney and Clemson with that seven point lead right now. Debo's got to be happy with the way that opening drive went not just to score but also to help take this crowd out of the game. The freshman from Little Rock hurdles the first defender and slams straight ahead. Now Lattimore and the young man you're looking at right here they were the top two running backs in the nation in high school depending Herbie on which rating service right. you read. Right and, and Dyer's 5'9 about 215 pounds rock solid looking at him down on the field before the game he just looks like a guy has a low center of gravity can be very tough for this Clemson defense to arm tackle him. Up alongside gets the handoff from Newton breaks the first wave but not the second. And storming in on him. There's a young man who was highly rated too. You talked about him, Bowers. Daquan Bowers doing a good job right there. He's able to fight right through, disrupt the play, and then look at the jerseys, the white jerseys swarming. They knew that Newton and Dyer in this Auburn running game, they had to negate, slow it down, force Newton to pass, and that's exactly what Kevin Steele's defense was able to do right there. Gilchrist and McDaniel. Go back for this punt. So our first punt. And it is boom. Gilchrist. Spun down at the 20 yard line. And Ryan Shoemaker with a great punt. So we'll see if the Auburn defense has adjusted after that 51 yard punt. Having you here, and in part by. Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. So we are back in Auburn, Alabama. And Clemson with the football and the lead. Toomer's Corner, of course, has been an Auburn tradition since 1896. And if Auburn can come back and win this, 
They'll be celebrating big time over there. Ellington. Ian Harper. And the ball on the ground. No, nope, it's the running back. And he's got complete control. I thought for a moment watching how the defensive linemen were reacting that uh, maybe that ball was down. But he had, he had it very securely in his grip. Brent, the last drive, Clemson went right down the field, 12 plays. They ran the ball actually 10 times. We talked a lot about how they controlled things up front. Let's see if Auburn's able to make some adjustments and get a little bit more aggressive, maybe throwing a few more blitzes to try to disrupt this flow of Clemson's offense. Remember now the official game clock being kept on the field. That's why you don't see the time juggle. Incomplete. Had a target. And Terrence Ash, the senior from South Carolina. This is the one area that I think if there's a question mark about Clemson, and that's a well-thrown ball, and it's a ball that Ash should catch, and it should be a first down. But, Brent, that's the question about Clemson. Are they going to be good enough on the outside at wide receiver in games like this to be able to be consistent in their passing game? You can see Dabo Sweeney is fired up trying to get his senior to focus here on the road. Third down and nine. Parker making an adjustment at the line. Clock running down on him. Gets it off in time. And the defensive pressure forced the incompletion as they get in on him. Brent, you're exactly right. If Auburn can get pressure with four, they showed blitz, but they backed out. And they brought a fifth guy in late. But getting pressure with four is a big key tonight for Auburn's defense. And Fairley's in there again, number 90. Did Curry get a little piece of that? It was close, number 33. Because that ball kind of fluttered and died. And I, I wondered if the linebacker might not have gotten to it. But here comes the punt now. And the Auburn defense did adjust. Carr signals fair catch. And pretty good field position coming up for Newton. That's the theme this week. Family and I'm all. Well, the official has just notified everybody, 6.55 to go in the first. Remember, the official time is being kept on the field. McCaleb, at number 23, and also on the field, along with Eric Smith. And they are not fooling the big fella. Daquan Bowers, who was one of the most ballyhooed recruited defensive linemen, Herbie, he's coming on strong. But he's a great player, and he's especially great when you don't block him. <laughs> I mean, what was that? Here's an adjustment for Gus Malzahn. Keep an eye on 93 and White. Wow, you got to watch him. Six-yard loss, and it would help to get a body on him, Coach. Second down and 16 for Newton. And Smith is operating back there. They haven't tried any end of rounds. They leave Smith there for pass protection. And now Newton airs it out, going deep, incomplete. Goes up top to Darvin Adams, number 89. This is, these are the kind of routes that Auburn likes to throw, kind of the double moves, the wheel routes, the out and ups. And this time Adams takes it to the outside. And, you know, McDaniel's in position to play. Actually, was a little bit slow to react to that ball. And if it had a little bit more air under it, Adams would have run under that for probably for a big touchdown. Oh, third and 16 and a sluggish start for Auburn here at home tonight. Take the handoff. Penalty flag. There's going to be a holding call, we think. And Newton will take it. Will he go out of bounds? No. Picks up the first down, but it may be coming back if this holding is on the offense. That's how tough he is, though. Even if this comes back, Herbie, that's a great indication how holding. tough he runs. Offense. Number 57. Ten yards to the previous spot. Repeat third down. That's Isom, the right guard. And, and that's where they would like to see him obviously take the chance and use his size at 6'6", 250, and his speed. And some of the other runs where it, it isn't necessarily necessary. But there's another big play, another opportunity for Auburn. This time they're going to bring it back with that holding call. But that would have been a big opportunity for Auburn to get their tempo going and get up to the line of scrimmage. But they've been slow here these first two series.
third and 26. The freshman's still out because of pass protection. That inside handoff, McCaleb. And this will force Auburn to punt again. Just get a little more yardage and try to get some field position on this next punt because they had a boomer from Shoemaker of 51 yards the first time, and now he'll try the second. This Clemson defense deserves a lot of credit coming into this game and the way they've handled Cam Newton in this offense in the first two series. So Gilchrist is back along with McDaniel. Not nearly as good as the first one. And this is McDaniel fair catching it. At the 29 yard line and we check in with Reese Davis in the studio for Sports Center right now. All right, Brent, this Sports Center right now brought to you by Discover Rewards. Mark Ingram, the Heisman Trophy winner, made his season debut. 151 yards on just nine carries, couple of touchdowns as Alabama rolled Duke 62-13. Sports Center 11 Eastern on ESPN News. Major test for Alabama next week going to Arkansas. Ryan Mallett pulling out the win late against Georgia. And now Harper. And he flanks out to the top of your screen. So with an empty backfield, Kyle Parker on the move. Not much of a gain on that as he comes in underneath with that completion. Well, Chris Berman hosts. ESPN's popular two-hour pregame show. Tom Jackson, Keith John Johnson, Ron Jaworski, Mike Dicker, Chris Carter, Chris Mortensen, Adam Schefter. Is there enough room on that set for everybody? Anyway, countdown presented by IBM. It's 11 a.m. Eastern. Boys will have all the latest. Second down and nine here. Harper on the move to the left. We're going to throw that flanker screen, get Harper out there as a blocker, and they go to Cody Burns, who was once a quarterback here at Clemson, and now number 18 is a wide receiver, and it looks like there's a penalty flag down. Yeah, I think Brandon Clear, who's trying to help out another receiver who's out there trying to block the secondary, actually held in his attempt and send Clemson back even further. Holding. Offense. Number 85, 10 yards from previous spot, second down. Ball is brought back at the 21 yard line. Second down and 19 for the Tigers. Got a lot of ground to make up right now. Lose the rush back across the body. Got a target wide open, short of the first down that time. But that was a well thrown ball to Dwayne Allen. And this is what you're supposed to avoid as a quarterback with throwing back against your body into the teeth of the defense. But when you're a quarterback like this, you're Kyle Parker, you're kind of a gamer, you take some risks. This time he throws it right back into the right in the middle of that defense. And look at the pressure by Fairley that time. He throws it on the run like he's playing a little baseball. And it makes it a makeable third down with that game. So Kyle Parker gets it done with his arm and his brain that time. Snaps off the quick throw and a first down. That was a beautiful pass. He just snapped it off to Marquand Jones. Good call. And that's what I think Clemson, Brent, you talked about the big play on second down. Clemson's offensive style, Billy Napier, the offensive coordinator, along with Davos Sweeney, saying, you know, a big key for us tonight is just staying in that third to two to third to four range where we have a chance where we know that their pass rush is coming, but we can get the ball out quickly. That was a good example of that there. Deal is number 30. Sets up as a H-back, and Ellington is the running back. And he barges right behind the middle of that veteran offensive line. Grinds out about three yards on that play. We'll be taking a look at the total yards in this game. Very lopsided here early. 102 for Clemson and only eight. Eight for Auburn. Now one of the other ways to slow down Cam Newton is to keep him on the sidelines. So Clemson's doing a good job of controlling this game right now and controlling the clock. 
if we knew what the game clock said, we'd have a better idea what was going on. Now uh, time is stopped on the field by the back judge wants to talk to the referee. Remember, they're keeping the time on the field. And so the scoreboard, even though it shows 627, is not official right now. 454 was the time when this drive started. Second and eight for Parker in Clemson. Beautiful play fake. First and ten as he comes up firing to Dwayne Allen. The sophomore from Fayetteville, and it's a first down. Nice play action move here by Parker. Yeah, and Brent, the, the Auburn is in man to man coverage, and this is exactly where they're going to kind of leak out to tight end. He's kind of an H back, and Auburn's linebackers get lost. They're unable to find Allen, and when you can't find him because of the linebackers, look at this. There's nobody there. The play action you talked about, but the linebackers getting caught up once again, not being able to find the receiver in man coverage. Ellington. Gets ahead. Yeah, been just a touch of a, a little bobble by Parker, but he grabbed it quickly. Remember, this, this young man was drafted in the first round by the Colorado Rockies. Was told about it by a fan who was watching a college baseball game. And uh, had the Rockies been willing to give him in excess of $2 million, in all likelihood, he would not be playing quarterback. But he has signed, and he's fully expected to report to baseball camp next spring as Gene Chizik. Very concerned at the way Kyle Parker is just moving this ball right down the field. We've got a minute left in the opening quarter, and uh, time has been stopped. And, of course, everybody's a little bit confused. It says 627 up on the scoreboard. They'd be better off zeroing out that clock Side until we get it straight. Against Clemson. I mean, it has to be a little bit disconcerting to a quarterback when he looks up and he's a 627. Not being able to see the play clock or the game clock affects you as a quarterback and trying to manage a game. And then all these, the whistles, the way they're constantly interrupting the game, and it really affects the continuity of what you're trying to do on a drive. Second and eight. Parker has to keep it himself. And that time it was the defensive pressure and again Nick Fairley that junior from Mobile is off to a big game here and he is a big key in this defense because of his speed and what he can do they're just slanting and when you can slant and you have this kind of athletic ability it really creates some confusion even with the veteran offensive line the size of Fairley at about 6 5 300 pounds along with the quickness it makes it tough so we come to the end of the first quarter Clemson takes a 7-0 lead on their first drive of the night, and they make it hold up. You are watching the SEC on ESPN, and Auburn of the SEC trails Clemson of the ACC. 7-0 as we start the second quarter, and they have made the announcement that the scoreboard clock is now working, and Jamie Harper has come in as the running back. He will slide out the other way, and Kyle Parker throws to Bryce McNeil, his first reception. Very close to a first down. As you take a look at this first quarter summary, it was really dominated by Clemson. Uh, Clemson not only has the advantage with the yards, that opening drive, 12 plays, 10 times they ran the football, but Auburn really hasn't been out on the field at all. I mean, eight total yards, all rushing. Cam Newton hasn't thrown yet for, for one yard. He hasn't been able to complete a pass. They now are using an extra offensive lineman, Clemson, as an additional blocker and timeout 
has been called by Clemson. A little bit of confusion out there. There is Thomas, number 63. Dabo Sweeney's side sending him in, and he was actually lined up as a flexed tight end that time on the right side of the formation. So they had power on that side, and we want to remind everybody now, this week, Monday Night Football, the defending Super Bowl champions will go west, take on the San Francisco 49ers, who were very disappointing last week when they went up to Seattle and Pete Carroll and the Seahawks blew their wheels off. But they're at home on Monday night and frequently, Herbie, as you know, that home field team, they're fall fired. How about the comments this week from head coach Mike Singletary saying, I, you know, I want to thank Pete Carroll for what he did to us because he taught us some lessons about what we need to do moving forward. So I've never heard a coach quite say that after a game. I happened to be in San Francisco. I was watching the game. Yeah. Singletary had every chance in the world early. Couldn't cash in. Gambled on a couple of fourth downs. Couldn't score. And by the time that the Seahawks grabbed control and they went to the sideline, you would have thought you and I were back watching Pete Carroll in Southern California. High five. High five people. and hugging Smiling. people, pointing at them. All that. Same old Pete, right? <laughs> now we come to the fourth and one. Additional blocker on the right side. They'll run in that direction, and Harper tried to get it, but he did not. Good stand. Josh Bynes, along with Bell, a defensive back coming up. He talked about how they lined it up on the right side with the freshman Brandon Thomas, 63 at tight end. But look how quick Auburn, in fact, fairly looked like he may have either knew the snap count or jumped the gun there. But that play, again, didn't have a chance. And it was the Auburn interior that got low and got off the line of scrimmage quickly and it freed up the linebackers. Now, Herbie, that gives Newton pretty good field position here. That's what you he know, needs. Coming out from yeah. the 33-yard line, they've been dominated, as you pointed out, on the clock. And uh, so... Here comes the big fella, and there is that motion using the Wildcat, and they put Reed back there, and then brought motion off of it, so they go to the Wildcat for the first time here, that just trying to change things up a little bit. And it's good to see Trevon Reed, one of the highly touted recruits that they had in this, this great recruiting class. He's had an ankle that's been bothering him, but he's going to play tonight's the first time, and his first action is an Auburn Tiger. Now here is second and four, and that is Newton taking the snap this time and handing to the freshman, and nothing doing. They gang up on Dyer. I'm going to say it again. I said it at the beginning of the game. Auburn's going to have to have an ability to execute in their passing game to have a chance to consistently move the football. Clemson has done all their scouting. They know everything about Gus Malzahn's offense. It's a lot of razzle-dazzle, a lot of pre-snap movement, a lot of motion. But it all comes down to them wanting to be a power running team, and Clemson's taken that away. And the running back is Dyer. And you know Newton dangerous on the move through high that time and incomplete. Eric Smith, the intended target, and that will present a fourth and two. But hold on, there is a flag, and let's see who this goes against. Ineligible field, downfield field against the offense, number 73. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. That is Lee Zimba, their outstanding left tackle. Well, that's so why this will bring on a punter. I mean. They actually moved Lee Zemba, the, the left tackle, over to right tackle. They and unbalanced the unbalanced, line that time. Yeah, and he didn't announce himself eligible as a tight end. He, he was 15 he yards off. down field. <laughs> Two back again uh, for Ryan Shoemaker. His third punt, Gilchrist and McDaniel. And here comes Gilchrist on the move. Ooh, slammed out of bounds at the 23-yard line. So Kyle Parker and Clemson, an underdog, lead it here tonight by seven. The show made by The Nation is packing its bags for a Big Ten road trip. That's right, Sports Nation taking its characters, costumes to hang out with some of college football's most passionate fans. Four days in Big Ten country, Monday through Thursday, 4 p.m. ESPN2. They'll visit Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, and Penn State. And now it is first down and 10. Ellington is the running back for Clemson.
He's going to come up fire on a first down. Play action gave him time and snaps off a completion to Ellington, his running back. We send you to Reese Davis. Brent coming into the game, this Taco Bell studio update. Oregon was scoring a point a minute. Doing better than that in the first half against Portland State. Darren Thomas to Malachi Lewis in 30 minutes. 45 points for the fifth-ranked Ducks. They continue to look dominant on offense. And don't forget, on ABC and ESPN2, 8 o'clock Eastern time, former Auburn coach Tommy Tuberville on his 56th birthday takes on Texas and Mac Brown. <laughs> Uh, Herbie, that duck is going to work out again tonight with those push-ups. And meanwhile, comes Ellington. Big run across midfield, out of bounds at the 48-yard line. 22 yards for Andre Ellington. A great block by the right tackle, Landon Walker, getting downfield. But, Brent, I'm, I'm starting to see a little bit of a trend. These Auburn linebackers against these screens are struggling to get out and into position and being able to catch up to the speed of Andre Ellington and Jamie Harper. It's about the third time now we've seen in the first half Clemson able to pick up valuable yards off of a screen because the Auburn linebacker aren't there to make the play. Well, Davo Sweeney is not unfamiliar with competing against Auburn. And here is his running back, Ellington. Knocked out of bounds just short. But Sweeney, remember, played in Tuscaloosa for Alabama. There is the young man right there. He has been in this arena as a player, a graduate assistant, an assistant coach, and tonight as a head coach. And there are the numbers. Never lost to Auburn as an Alabama player, as an assistant coach, only three and two. And now he comes in for the first time as a head coach. And he sends Harper onto the field. About as animated tonight, Herbie, as I've ever He's seen him. He's fired up. He really He's is. Fired up. Well, that'll do that with an Alabama guy when he sees Auburn. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Here comes a beautiful play action again by Kyle Parker. Going to look back on the other side. And he overthrew Harper, who had slipped out of the backfield. That's checking down below now with Aaron Andrews. Aaron, is it uh, as warm down there as it is up here? It's actually not bad. Herbie wouldn't be sweating too, too much <laughs> yeah. down here. But, Brent, to Adam, what you were talking about with Dabo Sweeney, all week long he was telling his team about the rowdy environment here at Jordan-Hare. Obviously, he was here with Alabama. Kyle Parker said that's all we heard about. Guys, he also mentioned game day, Brent and Kirk, they're here for Auburn. They're not here for you. It's Slim Pinkett. <laughs> so this is an underdog uh, role we're seeing out of the country tonight. Oh, coaches like to say that. Third down and inches now. And Harper spins. What a beautiful spin for the first down. He should know I'm a charter member of the SO Club. Take it away, Herbie. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Again, a great play here by Jamie Harper. Auburn's defensive line on third and short tonight so far. They've been getting a good jump at the snap of the ball. They got penetration, but it was the effort by Harper right there coming off Stevens again. Remember, it's his first game playing this year, and right now he is struggling to stay with the speed of these Clemson linebackers or running backs, but a great effort there by Harper to pick up that first. <laughs> Play action again, and here comes Parker on the move, throwing, dropped at the 20-yard line. Coach won't be happy about that. Xavier died, drops it. He's a senior. He should have had that, Herbie. Yeah, I think that Josh Bynes, the linebacker, I've been talking a lot about these linebackers. They're getting tested in every way, not just defending the run, but also the pass. Watch Bynes, 17, off to the left there in the middle of the screen, go up right there. And I don't know if he actually got a hand on the ball, but I think he definitely was able to get in the way and distract Allen enough there yeah, to pre right. prevent him yeah, from making apologies. that catch. My apologies. That would have been a really tough catch, as a matter of fact. Ellington is in alongside of Parker here on this second down and 10. Comes the pressure. And the linesman called, says Auburn calls timeout here. Now the clock says Star we've got 11-18. 30-second timeout. Media timeout. Media timeout. So he checks to make sure if we want a full one. Yes, we do. <laughs> Time to pay some bills. Come on back. It's a good neighborhood war. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy, and Dr. Pepper. There's nothing like a pepper. Ah, the Tuskegee Airmen. What a group. America's first black military airmen from 41 to 46. 996 pilots graduated. 450 fought in World War II. 
Sixty six of those brave young men killed in combat and thirty two more were prisoners of war. And we certainly thank all their relatives who might be watching tonight for their service to this country as you're watching Clemson against Auburn. And there is a very talented freshman by the name of DeAndre Hopkins, Herbie, from Central South Carolina. There is a flag down, but you've got to keep an eye on number six. You spoke about it. Yep. Could be the weakness of this team. The see young men are going to take a look at now. Yeah, Hopkins is going to step up. Bryce McNeil will have to. Now the play's going to come back. It's going to be a penalty on Clemson. But what I love to see there and what we've seen tonight from this quarterback, Kyle Parker, is his ability to break contain get to the outside keep the play alive patiently read the Auburn secondary and these young receivers are working well to find an opening in the zone and they're also breaking away from man coverage so one thing Auburn's got to do is they got to do a better job of keeping number 11 Kyle Parker in the pocket not let him get to the outside so easily now he has been breaking that containment all night he's been rolling and, and you know he's only about six six one Looks to me as a field, you know, he's about Drew Brees, maybe a little bit taller than Brees. Yep. And uh, here he is straight back under pressure, snapped it off. That is a beautiful throw with a defender right in his face mask that time. I mean, you can't throw the football any better than this, Harvey. No, it, and you're right about the pressure here. Igwe gets in, the defensive end is unblocked. And, you know, that's the poise that you talk about with Kyle Parker. Being a baseball player, not just a baseball player, a guy that's drafted in the first round. He gets this football out of his hands as Igwe is coming down, closing in on him. And Al Allen splits a uh, spread out to the outside as a tight end, showing some pretty good athletic ability himself. On this third and short, number eight is back in, Harper. And he has run for some tough yards. He caught a shovel pass and scored the game's only touchdown if he just joined us. Iso, penalty flag. Picked it up, but over there on the line, that judge coming right into it had thrown the flag. Auburn's been jumping that snap count on those third Offside. and shorts. Defense. You're right. Yeah. That's what they did Five again. Fairley's been the guy every time. Twice he was able to disrupt the play this time. That's where Kyle Parker has to recognize that. Give him a good hard count. Try to get him to jump. I think Fairley just jumped a little bit too early that time on his own. So the clock seems to be functioning throughout this quarter. So, folks, that is the official time. And we hear otherwise as it ticks down to 945. It was disrupted for most of the first quarter. First out and 10. And this is a big drive for both these teams. Throw back. Deflected, incomplete, and almost intercepted. Carter had a shot at it, didn't he? Uh, the pressure is going to come from the backside. They're actually trying to set up a play. Carter does a really good job as a defensive end, not just to jump up, but he knocks it down and he doesn't give up on the play. This play's designed. They're trying to get the speed of Auburn's defense out of position. Carter's there. He knocks it down, tries to keep his balance and come up with the interception. Great play. And they had five defensive guys pouring in on him that time. You're exactly right. And Carter with a terrific move. Second down and 10 as Harper slips out of the backfield. Going to drop off that screen pass in underneath. Going to use their tight end, and that is short of a, a first down. Very creative play. That was Dwayne Allen. He was the receiver. He's a sophomore out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. This time the screen is set up, but it's an Auburn zone defense as opposed to the man-to-man -man that they've been playing so much of. And in zone defense, even though the, Parker does a good job of waiting until the last second before Carter finally closes in on him, the linebackers this time and the safety's in position to close in and make the play. Third down now. Harper is buried. And Bynes, the linebacker, leading the assault that time. Josh Bynes, number 17. Bynes shoots right through the A-gap. It's a miscommunication by Clemson's offensive line, one of the few mistakes that they've made the entire game. And it's Bynes, one of the seniors in this Auburn defense, makes a big play here on third down to prevent Clemson from getting that first down. So Chandler, Catanzaro will attempt to make this a 10-point game. There's your snapper and your holder. The second career field goal attempt, and this is not a gimme. 42-yarder. 
Strong leg. Good looking field goal. The road underdog with a 10 point lead. I think that coach is a little happy or what? Cue the duck. You bet. Aflac trivia question time. Oh, Who dead. gave Clemson and Auburn their Tigers nickname? Got to give that little thought, historians out there. Might even be a dispute about this one, but bring it on. You try to just eliminate me on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. This goes way back. You, just, you, you can you watch. You just drop the hammer on this. I said, no. I'm no. out. You've I'm been, tapped out. You've been zeroing me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I want a century back, okay? <laughs> All right, West Byron with that ball on the tee. Washington. Now to get the signal, you can. I think is it our clock again, or is it uh, Skycam? Well, we, there a uh, little bit of problem with the Skycam, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, so we're going to take a break here. And see if we can get this uh, sorted out and fixed. Meanwhile, Clemson with a 10 0 lead on Auburn. So, just a short time ago, we asked you who gave Clemson and Auburn their Tigers nickname? He's the only man to coach at both schools. You go way back before the turn of the last century. A man whose name was quite prominent last week. A man by the name of John Heisman. All right. Oh. Was coaching here at Auburn. They were already the Tigers. Went over to Clemson. And when you and I were there for practice, I asked Tim Barrett, I said, is it true that Heisman gave both you and Auburn their nickname? And he said, we can't dispute it. He said, there is no way. That's what we've heard. So we're going with the legendary... John Heisman. A nice little piece of trivia. That is a good one. We could use that one. Now, Skycam has been lifted up. I think the, the oh, eagle is. came out there and said, come on, let me lift you up here a little bit. Can Where'd anything go? else slow down? <laughs> Gus Malzahn and Auburn. Poor Malzahn. It's I mean, not his night. Herbie. It's one of those nights where the whistle's <laughs> blowing about as often as he's had a chance to snap the football tonight. I mean, they've had nine snaps. I think so. Eight and a half, eight, eight, <laughs> nineteen to go in, his, in the tour at the half. This one's going to be fielded right at the goal line by Washington. And Washington is stopped short of the 20-yard line. And we talked about it tonight. Gus Malzahn's got to get Cam Newton going, throwing the football to be able to open up this offense. But there's been great coverage downfield. A few times he's dropped back. He's 0 for 2. This has been the key. Auburn cannot establish the line of scrimmage and run the football. Daquan Bowers and company have owned him. And right now, Cam Newton... First time starter, a little bit of uncharted waters, and he's getting a little emotional on the sideline trying to fire his team up after three straight three and outs. And then he's got the freshman alongside him as the running back right now. Dyer has returned. And now off of the audible, the defense backs out. And here is Dyer, and the freshman is not finding Dale. Bowers again. Yeah, you know, sometimes fans get so caught up in Cam Newton and Dyer and the receivers and all the skill. But ladies and gentlemen, this is where the game is won every week. It's in the trenches. And right now, Clemson, led by Daquan Bowers, is just manhandling Auburn up front. So you can't see what Cam Newton can do. You can't see what Dyer can do, because right now they can't do anything because of the battle up front. Second down and 12, and again, it is the defensive front. McCaleb was the running back. He replaced Dyer, and I should say Dyer was still there as the, uh, let, me, let, let me correct myself. Dyer was the running back that time. 
I know you and I are big fans of Kevin Steele, the Clemson defensive coordinator. Mixed it up to looks and doing a really good job of confusing Auburn up front as well. Absolutely. Third down and eight now, and he's got Eric Smith. Do the pass protector slip out alongside him? He's going to go straight back and look down the middle. Got the first and ten, and Newton was very patient on that play. Darvin Adams, his ace. And that is the first, first down of the evening, folks. This is going to be now they're going to go tempo here. So we're going to try to slip this one in in a hurry. But good job by Newton coming off his primary receiver. Finds a nice opening behind the linebackers. That play took a while to develop. It's finally there, and they made a nice play. So they're at the 43. And on the end around, they bring McCaleb, who was back there with Dyer, now you're seeing Gus Malzahn. He just wanted a first down to have a little bit of a chance to run some of these trick plays that Auburn has from time to time. McCaleb in with Dyer together. A quick huddle break, and they slip around McCaleb from the right side around to the left on a reverse. Now they move Dyer into position here on the first down. Cam Newton wants to bring him in motion back to the tailback spot and play action with him. Now Newton. Away from trouble and throws incomplete. He had Eric Smith wide open and simply missed it. Here's that last play. You can see, look at the Caleb just leaning down, just almost like a fumble ruski, hiding down behind the lineman. I think it, that's the first time Clemson's been caught off guard. And it got it got Newton back to the line of scrimmage, but they're unable to get successful play here on that first and ten. So they got a second down now, and oh, he had a wide open receiver, and now the yes, Clemson defense. Charge timeout, Clemson. That's their second charge timeout of the half. Thirty second timeout. With 6:14 to go, Clemson up by ten. But Auburn, this is obviously as they just picked up their initial first down of this game, their best drive of the night. Well, let me remind you about Sunday NFL Countdown again. Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, Chris Berman and the gang, and they'll analyze all the stories around the NFL. I'm sure the Philadelphia Eagles and Michael Vick will be a story they'll cover with Vick moving into the starting lineup after the injury that Cole suffered last week. So here we are now with second down and 10. And uh, getting ready and... You know, Herbie, the, the one thing when you watch a big quarterback like this, Newton, you, you just really want to see how he handles the passing game. And he really did have Smith wide open on that flat. Yeah, and I, and I just think right now his rhythm has been disrupted. It's not just Auburn's offense. It's been he's been affected. And, and maybe that one pass is something that can get him going. And the big thing about Gus Malzahn's offense, he wants to pick up first downs and he wants to crank up the tempo to get a defense on its heels. There is the option play. Here is the freshman. They get into daylight. And that is the first spark that Dyer has been able to show here tonight. And it is all because they got him to daylight. Exactly. And Newton actually could do a better job of attacking Daquan Bowers. See how he attacks Bowers? And then Bowers almost catches up to Dyer. But Brent's right. Finding room for Dyer, getting him in space with his quickness, is something they've not been able to do all night until there. Newton keeps it. Barges straight ahead the first down won't be stopped until he is finally walloped at the 16 and there's a penalty flag thrown back at the line of scrimmage Holy offense 77 of the offense 10 yards to previous spot third down and that is A.J. Green A.J. Green the play was already developed. Cam Newton was already by him five or ten yards. And A.J. Green, after his quarterback, was already accelerating upfield, grabbed on to Jenkins. That's one of those as a first-time starter, first-year starter. It's one of those he's going to have to learn from. But now it's a big third down. Newton throws deep. Battle for it incomplete and that was Darvin Adams making an effort down there battling the defensive backs and it'll bring up fourth and 12. 
Boy, Cam Newton that time really just stared down his receiver, Adams, the whole way. And when you have a safety in center field and DeAndre McDaniel, who had nine interceptions a year ago, he's reading the eyes of Newton, gets in position, and is able to knock that football away. There's plenty of time for Clemson. And because they were knocked back out of that with that penalty, Herbie, they're out of field goal range too and uh, the ball is down at the uh, 42 yard line so they're going to have to punt here comes shoemaker into punting and again they run the safety back there and uh, there's a delay to give him a little more room to punt the ball Interesting that they're going to try. It looks like Hopkins is back there with McDaniel. Remember, we told you about this talented freshman the there. Offense. Five yards to previous spot. Still fourth down. Well, this is, a, this is a dangerous spot for a true freshman to make a decision on a punt. I mean, Dabo must have an awful lot of confidence in this young man. He's standing right now inside the 15. He's with his veteran safety, DeAndre McDaniel, back. So. The young man has help standing now on the Clemson 10. McDaniel's going to hope it goes in and it does. Let us go to the studio and Reese Davis for a Sports Center in game update. Brett, Texas and Texas Tech are underway. First offensive snap for the Red Raiders goes over Taylor Potts' head, and the freshman Jackson Jeffcoat is all over it. Texas has started three running backs in three games. This one is Fozzie Whitaker, and on the first play, old Fozzie gets it in there. Mac Brown on the road on top by a touchdown. It's on ABC or ESPN2. Reese, of course, the last time the Longhorns went in there, they lost that dramatic one-point game and a shot at the national championship when Crabtree caught that winning pass from Harrell. And uh, ball control just shows you such a huge difference here. Time of possession. Clemson keeping the ball away from Cam Newton. Lost to Harper coming around. Harper's banged out of bounds. Well, as we look back at it, we would have to give the Clemson offense on its first drive an A. And that's our only touchdown drive of the night. And it was a clinic. Total yards now 182 for Clemson and only 66 here for Auburn in the first half. Yeah, and, and you just have a feeling right watching this Clemson offense that they are still feeling very confident that they can move this ball against Auburn's defense. They bring the end around now. And a first and ten with Jerron Brown. So Jerron Brown picks it up. Great speed by these receivers. A lot of them are young, but they have a lot of upside because Jerron Brown is a sophomore at 6'2", 200 pounds. True freshman Bryce McNeil, number seven, 6'1", about 180 pounds. You talked about DeAndre Hopkins. He's 6'1", 195 pounds. Really, really hot top end speed. When you give them a little bit of a room to run, they're going to get downfield in a hurry. Parker, 11 of 16, 117 yards here. And then he throws again on first and 10 and drops it off beautifully to the tight end. Well designed play, and Dwayne Allen does the rest. 16 yards. Doing a good job of mixing up the play calling. Billy Napier, I love this first and 10 call, and I love that Parker was ready to get rid of the football as soon as he came off of that fake and saw Allen breaking free. Clemson, or Auburn taking a chance there, bringing Bates, bringing pressure with the linebackers out of position, makes it an easy throw, providing you're ready to make the throw by Kyle Parker. Ellington, touch to the right, picks up a couple of yards on the play. He was hit first by Blanc, Mike Blanc, the senior defensive lineman from Pompano Beach, Florida. You know, we always visit with coaches and they talk about balance. The balance that I'm seeing from Clemson right now, not just with the running the football and passing the football, they're doing a good job of coming into the teeth of the Auburn defense occasionally, and that sets up a lot of room on the outside. So they attack to the outside, get back to the middle, attack to the outside, and I think that has Auburn really off balance. Second and eight. Parker snaps it off, and the receiver was not ready for it. 
So it goes incomplete. He was going to continue to move downfield. Xavier Dye didn't realize he was going to snap it off against that defense. I think that's a miscommunication and a mistake there by Xavier Dye, not reading the co coverage properly. Kyle Parker put the ball where he thought he would be on an adjustment to the coverage. And Dye, who now checks out after that mistake, wishing he had that play back. Here's third down, 323. Need eight. The screens have been working here against man coverage. Incomplete. And Clemson is forced to punt. With more than three minutes remaining, Auburn and Cam Newton will get another chance to get on the scoreboard here. Almost feel the Auburn fans a little restless. They've gotten so accustomed to seeing Gus Malzahn's offense kind of go up and down the field and put up big numbers against certain opponents. Last week against Mississippi State, they only scored 17. When we got into town, we heard about it from some of the fans and media, what happened to Gus Malzahn's offense, and now being shut out so far in the first half, their third game of the year. So here is the punter who leads the nation, Dawson Zimmerman. Talk about a big leg. Hit on the one and couldn't spin. That's a 52-yard punt. He'll come out on the 20. Reese Davis, what's going on with the Broncos of Boise State up in Laramie tonight? Well, Brett taking on those Wyoming Cowboys, and Wyoming had a little miscommunication on the snap. The quarterback, Austin Carter Samuels, wasn't ready for it. It bounced around. Shea McClellan grabbed it for a touchdown. The third-ranked Broncos up by 10 in the first quarter. Well, when's the last time you were in Idaho? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes McCaleb. And Newton keeps it himself and barges out to the 28-yard line. Next week, Boise State plus Oregon State. And that could wind up being a, a huge game on the college football calendar. We'll see how the night unfolds here. Second down and three for Newton. play to his running back who had reset makes a good move for the first and ten that time Ontario McCaleb he's hit by Andre Branch right how about the speed we've talked a lot about Daquan Bowers 93 on one side how about 40 branch as a defensive end 65 260 his pursuit angle in a way he was able to slow down and get to McCaleb here comes that end around look trying to get daylight they like about four to five end rounds a game, and that was Terrell Zachary the first time that he touched the ball tonight. He's got a little break on top speed. Some good speed branches there. DeAndre McDaniel, who doesn't feel threatened at all in the passing game, up close to the line of scrimmage as a safety. Almost that eighth guy up close to the line of scrimmage for Clemson when Auburn runs. On second down and eight, Newton got a man wide open. It hangs a little bit, and it is intercepted. McDaniel picks it off. DeAndre McDaniel, the safety, as that pass hung a little bit, he got to it. Cody Burns was open early. Brett, we've talked a lot about the eyes of Cam Newton and how DeAndre McDaniel's one of the best safeties in the country. Nine interceptions a year ago at reading quarterback size, especially young quarterbacks. He's staring down his receiver. You can see that he puts it up in the air, as Brent said. Plenty of time for McDaniel to come over and make this interception. Look at the ball skills by the big safety at 6'1", 220 pounds. What did he have, about a half dozen interceptions last year? He had nine interceptions nine. a year ago. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, he does Good First job down and ten, out. and Harper checks back in. He'll be the running back here. Harper on first down, throws that middle screen and snaps it off to Jones that time. Let's check it down below with Aaron Andrews. But obviously, after throwing that interception there, Cam Newton very unhappy with himself. He's slapping his knee over here on the sidelines. He's shaking his head. And this is something Gene Chizik said to us yesterday. He's never faced adversity. He's very interested to see how he'll do with this. Well, he's facing it here tonight, Aaron. They'll try to regroup here, try to 
stop Clemson. And Clemson says, we're going to try to get even more. They cross the 40 with Xavier Dye for the first down now. They want to get down at least in field goal territory. Yeah. They're on the move here. Minute and a half to go. One timeout. Clock stops with a first down. Kyle Parker with the experience. Almost the opposite end of the spectrum compared to what we've seen from Cam Newton in total control of this Clemson offense. All fired up. Let's take a look back at our Chick-fil-A drive recap. It was the only touchdown of the night. It came after the opening kickoff, and it was a beauty turned in by Clemson. 12 plays, 76 yards, Herbie. And yeah, they took a little over six, six minutes off the clock and ran the football, as you said, 10 times of the 12 plays, controlled the line of scrimmage. Andre Ellington got off to a great start. And, boy, Kyle Parker was able to find Jamie Harper, the soft hands at 235 pounds, made the cutback, and it looked like Clemson was just going to settle in here and really be able to attack, but things have slowed down, obviously, with a 10 to nothing lead at this point. Now, Clemson has already kicked a 42-yard field goal. Let's keep that in mind here. Kevin Zaro, and it looked like he had a leg that might get it about 46-47 on that one kick. I love Aaron's report early about how Clemson is relishing the underdog role. I think their fans that have traveled here as well kind of enjoying their kind of an us-against-the-world approach to this game tonight. And remember, the ACC is yearning, I mean yearning, for a major victory. They have been beaten around the block so far this year. And they're matched and leading. He has to throw this one away and kill the clock at 129. And there's that man, Mr. Fairley. This time, Clemson trying to set up that screen, trying to get it to Harper, expecting pressure. Parker did everything he could to try to keep that uh, play alive, but fairly closes in on him. But really, the key there is the Auburn linebackers in great position. I think expecting it that time. The screen has hurt him in this half. That time they were there, and Parker had nothing to do but throw that ball away. Second and 10. The ball is at the 37-yard line. Underneath, pick up the first down, stop the clock, 122. Xavier die again. So after making that mental mistake, the young man's come back and turned in two nice plays. He sure has. It's some good blocks downfield that time. Like a couple receivers, big tackle. David Smith getting out there. The uh, the guard. Dyke does a good job of coming back to the football. And then you got to get back to the middle. You're, that's the plan. But the linebackers forced him back to the outside. But he picked up enough blocks downfield to be able to scoop downfield for the first down. Good block by Jerron Brown on that play. So they get ready now to go again. And Harper is the running back. They'll motion him out. Pump fake. Going to go deep. Go for the end zone, and Harper dives for it! What a grab! Touchdown, Clemson! One of the catches of the year! Oh, my baby! They told us he has the best set of hands on the team. 235 pounds, Brent, laying out to make that catch. Only question is, did the ball potentially hit the surface as he came down to the ground? What a ball by Kyle Parker. Parker. Are you so kidding, are you me? kidding me? <laughs> He's like, I love hitting home runs, but wow. there's, nothing, there's nothing like that feeling. It's a replay now. Inside of a couple minutes here of the half, they'll automatically take a look at it. What a first half for Kyle Parker, whether or not this is a touchdown or not. That, that was beautifully thrown because it wasn't going to be intercepted. Right. I mean, it was, it was Harper catch or incomplete. And uh, the shovel pass for the touchdown, and here we come. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. There you have it.
So that is a 24-yard touchdown after the interception. And Harper has scored both of the Clemson touchdowns here in the first half. Catanzaro, and what was interesting about that play is they weren't thinking field goal. Not when you take a shot like that. Let's go for the six here and we'll come on back. We've got enough time. An impressive first half by Clemson of the ACC and that young man, Kyle Parker. Some happy Clemson Tiger fans have traveled to Auburn, Alabama. Their heroes came in 2 and 0, oh, but nobody knew quite what to make of them. They hadn't stood toe to toe with any of the powers, but here tonight, an unranked Clemson team is dominating the 16th ranked team in the nation. Byron kicks it high, and it will be fielded by Washington of Auburn. Spins and battles to the 30-yard line. Well, Brett Harper, as you said, it motions out of the backfield and then comes down and just kind of sneaks out of the backfield. But I think the confusion is right here because Dye gets to the middle of the field, and when he gets to the middle of the field, Damon Washington, the corner from Auburn, gets a little bit caught up and confused. 14, he kind of goes into the middle, then he's confused. Now he's in no man's land. He can't get back. And uh, Jamie Harper just lays out, and you said, maybe one of the catches of the year. Yeah, I Let's watch this in real time, folks. Take a look at this ground. Well, that's pretty nice. Real pretty. And meanwhile, Auburn will see what they can do as we check in with Reese Davis. Reese? Brett, coming up on the Wendy's Halftime Report, a big theme of the weekend. Top 10 teams road test. Passing with flying colors so far. Mark Ingram returns in fine fashion. And you thought Arkansas was going to overtime? Child's please. Flag on the play here. But Dabo's fired up because his corner, Marcus Gilchrist, came on the backside of Cody Burns and see if that's what they're they're gonna make this call. He's, he doesn't like the call at all. For Auburn right now, they're just trying to get anything at all to try to move this ball down the field. Now remember, this offense is made for these kind of situations to be able to effectively move the ball down the field, but they haven't been able to do it all night. Newton spins, and this could be another holding call. Miller came flying. Yes, sir. Men against boys up front right now between Clemson's front four, getting pressure with four, and Auburn is so desperate they're just holding on to jerseys. And that was an obvious hole on the right Holy side. Point. Offense number 50. Penalties decline. Second down. Auburn just needs to get inside that locker room and regroup. That's what they have got to do and do it quickly. Crazy thing. Auburn collectively is a group 117 career starts. So it's not like there are a bunch of rookies up there. And that's McCaleb again getting the inside handoff. And I believe he's a little short of that first down. I mean, Auburn has been limited to less than 100 yards total here in the first half. They've passed for only 23. I mean, it, it is absolutely amazing. And Herbie, you said it best. A domination on both sides. The offensive and the defensive lines have played no question. very well for Clemson. off for the first down. So with 10 seconds left, 
Auburn would gladly settle for even a field goal just to get on the board here. Well, they are in field goal range for, for West Byram, a career long of 52 yards. Guy who's been around for a long time, a four-year kicker. So at this point, you, you, they've got a shot. One timeout left. You wonder if they might try to get this maybe to a little bit closer to the middle of the field to give him a better chance. And it's over on the right hash right now. They do have that timeout. And there goes Newton. Daylight still running, dives down. And he had to bring the clock down with two seconds, and he did get down just in time. He could have run the clock out. If he had kept going across the 15 and tackled, he would have run the clock out. I think some of the Clemson defenders were kind of baiting him there a little bit. Yeah. Just keep Final coming seconds a little are bit come further. Come on, come come on, on. kid. Keep, keep coming. <laughs> You're almost there. But at least he, he not only picked up the yards, like I said, he, he kept it, got it to the middle of the field, and this kicker is pretty consistent. Byron should have no problem at least getting a points on the board before they get into the halftime uh, locker room here. Yeah, he, he's one of the better kickers in the SEC. Yep. No question about it. The veteran here. And uh, agree, Herbie. If they can cut this to a 14-point deficit and try to get the offense back on track. That first half, it could not have been any worse for Auburn's offense. And any better for that young oh, man's yeah. offense. What a, what a... He loves this neighborhood. <laughs> Hitting home runs across the street. Throwing touchdown passes here as a quarterback. So here comes Byron. Josh Harris will snap it. And a quarterback, Neil Cottle, will put it down. And here comes. Auburn gets on the board with a 35-yard field goal as time runs out. Brings a cheer from their fans. Gives them a little bit of life here. Something to build on. And let's go down to Aaron Andrews right now, Aaron. To be able to get on the board with the three points there, but why has your offense been unable to establish any rhythm here? Well, right now, our tailback running game right now is not functional at all. So, again, we have to end up going back to some quarterback runs, open it up a little bit more in the running game, spread them out some. They're doing a great job on defense right now. We just got to be consistent on offense. Our defense is on the field too long. You told us this week Cam has not faced any adversity. He looks frustrated on the sideline. What do you tell him at halftime? Well, again, this is where you figure out who you are. You know what I mean? When it's all good, that's easy. What are you when it's bad right now? Right now it's bad. we got to fix it. All right, thank you. Brent. All right, and thank you very much. And now we're going to go to Reese Davis, the good Dr. Lou Holtz, and Kyle Bush's favorite college analyst, Mark May. Take it away, Reese. We welcome you back to Saturday Night Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. You're watching the SEC on ESPN, and the SEC with their hands full right now. Clemson of the ACC leads Auburn 17 to 3 as we get underway, and Auburn will handle the ball here to start the second half. Coming up on the move is Washington, and Washington sprints off to the left. Breaks a tackle, and yellow comes flying as he gets close to the 30. They have a face mask. I don't know if that's that – definitely looked like there was a face mask on the play with Washington trying to make the return. I don't know if they had a hold as well, but we saw two flags come in. Well, he said face mask, the referee. He just said it. During the return, face mask gets the kicking team. 15 yards to spot the foul. First down. Break for Auburn. And let's take a look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate, Herbie. And brought to you by Jamie Harper. Big fella getting out of the backfield and laying out for his second touchdown of the night. This is the All-State good hands play because look at this. 235 pounds laying out and making that catch. Now Newton comes 
trotting out with Auburn, and that penalty moves the ball out to the 45-yard line. And Newton will keep it straight. Herbie on that play, I saw Joe Testator, okay, uh, at halftime. Yeah. Now he's our announcer, our ESPN announcer, doing the 3D of this game. And he told me that that Harper play is the greatest play he has ever seen in 3D because they had a camera in the end zone and he was coming right at the audience. Now, there's a holding flag thrown by the umpire on this play. we got to go get our glasses and check that out. we go in there and see Joe. Joe, <laughs> re rack that for us. <laughs> that was pretty in high def. I can't imagine what it looked like in 3D. Holding. holding. Offense. Oh, they give it back. Yeah, it looks like. Yards the previous spot. Just Beats when Auburn catches a break, they can't get out of their own way. Yeah, and make exactly. another mistake. It just has not been a rhythm. Lack of continuity. The offense has not been able to go. Cam Newton, one of six. You can see the numbers and the difference. Time of possession, everything favoring Clemson. Auburn just needs to just put one drive together and try to change the flow of this game and the momentum of this game. Second and a bunch. Newton's got all kinds of time. He goes down that far sideline, and the big man is open. Darvin Adams, the junior from Kennesaw, Georgia, makes a big play, and they're in business now. Well, this is what Auburn likes to do. It's a double move, a pump and go to Adams, who gets off to the left here. He gets isolated, one-on-one -on -one coverage. The corner this time bit up on it, made it a very easy throw. He actually underthrew it, but an easy throw and a pump and go there for some big yards for Auburn. If they can strike here, it'd be huge. Throwing again. End zone, intercepted. Picked off brilliantly that time by Xavier Brewer. Oh, what a grab. That's the second interception thrown by Newton today. Brent, I, I really think that Cam Newton made up his mind before this route to get the ball to Kitchens on the wheel route down the field. He had a little bit of success earlier in this game making this throw, tries to get back to it, and a good job by Brewer, who makes a great catch. And I'll tell you, Cam Newton just seems to be struggling throwing the ball downfield. He's now three of his last 13 with, thir with three interceptions, throwing the ball 20 yards or more down the field. Now, they're going to spot that ball inside of the one-yard line. And Clemson wants instant replay to re-rack this. They definitely want instant replay to see if stepped on the line illegally, which would be a touchback. Not illegally, but, but he was forced to step on the line How could and he bring stop? it back on the 20. His momentum carrying Absolutely. him into the end zone. And... Uh, Clemson's really taking their time. Dabo wants an explanation. And Erin uh, Andrews, our reporter on the scene, she's here in this conversation. Dabo is saying there's no way. Brent, how could Brewer have stopped himself and tried to head in the other direction? His momentum clearly took him into the end zone. I, you know, the one, the one thing, Herbie, that, that strikes me about that play is that I think there's a little difference in the NFL rule and the college rule. Now, I'm, I might be mistaken. About clearly, the, no question in my mind, the NFL, that's coming out the 20-yard line. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, and uh, we, we'll find out here. Uh, they are going to take another look at this. No question. There's no question his momentum just taking him in. But his left foot gets down. Left the foot, field of play. Yeah, the left foot and the right foot. The left foot gets down at about the one-yard line, right? There's no question. And, and then the, right the other foot, foot comes down, down right goal at the goal line. line. And he, he's still trying to yeah, they, gather they, himself, and he's, he's, in, out, he's out of the end zone. Now, you see the side judge there? He sees it clearly, okay? So, and they're not looking at this upstairs. So that Clemson offense... Jamie Harper. So Aaron Andrews told us from down below, the referee said, you can't challenge that. That's not a challengeable call. And so they take Harper and just run right straight ahead of Josh Bynes, the, uh, the middle linebacker. Knowing the way Clemson has played tonight with the confidence that they have in Kyle Parker, 
I would not be surprised at all. Auburn is attacking downhill to stop the run and trying to push that line of scrimmage backwards. Don't be surprised if Clemson maybe is willing to take a little bit of a shot, try to trick Auburn and get the ball thrown downfield with Kyle Parker. Well, let's see here now. There it is, Herbie, rolling to the right. He's got an underneath receiver, and he'll take out of bounds. And that was close out of bounds. There is the yellow flag. The referee coming over, protecting the quarterback, and that is going to move him out of deep trouble. Zach Clayton was the defender over there, out of bounds. You knew it was going to be First close. Foul, 98 of the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. That is a big mistake. And, and I, Huge. I, I love a, an aggressive attitude from a defense. You have an offense pinned. You need to make a play. But look at this. You just can't do that. You cannot do that. We've come out here in the second half. Auburn's down 17 to 3, and they've made two, three huge mistakes with the penalty, the interception, and now a penalty here to get Clemson out of deep and, and they're inside their own five yard line. Look at the breathing room, that they now have. The ball out near the 18-yard line for Parker. Runs the toss with Hartley to that short side and a sharp tackle. That time, beautiful tackle. And that is Bynes again. He's a good-looking defensive player. It's the first time that, that we've seen Auburn kind of hold the edge on the outside. Clemson's doing a good job with a couple of their linemen, a lot of times pulling out to the outside and leading the way for their talented skill. And a lot of times there's room to run. That time, Auburn was there holding the edge, and the linebackers were able to clean it up from the inside out. Ellington in as the tailback. Shakes the first would be tackle, and look at number 17. Josh Bynes is a big time football player, and Washington was there with him. Now this defense has started the flow to the football a little bit better. Starting to attack Clemson as opposed to letting Clemson attack him. See there? There they are again. This time it's Antonio Antoine McLean leading the way. But this speed of Auburn's defense on display here these last couple plays on these outside runs. Got a buckle up. Chin strap real tight now here in the second half of this one. There's some knocking going on between Auburn. Fabro called a timeout at the top of this top of the screen. Not happy with his quarterback that time. Kyle's over there defending what was going on. So let us take a break now. Third and nine coming up. Clemson 17, Auburn 3. We welcome you back. Third down coming up for the Clemson Tigers. They have the lead, 87,000 plus. Motion through the formation. Parker in a foot race. Gets it off and it is dropped. Incomplete deal. Couldn't hang on. The safety valve fullback. And Clemson forced to punt it away. Good job here by Auburn's front four. Third down and long. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator from Auburn, deciding just to rush forward to the right there. Carter does a really good job of just having too much speed for Harrison. Gets around him. Forces Parker to get out a little bit, probably a little bit out a little bit sooner than he was ready. And Deal tries to make that one-handed grab. There's the nation's leading punter again. Big moment for Dawson Zimmerman. Carr is back deep for Auburn. This is returnable. And he's hit right away. And down it is. His knee is down right there before we can return it as we check in with Reese Davis. Brent out in Lubbock after falling behind 14 to nothing. Texas Tech back to 14-7 when Taylor Cox looks for his old high school teammate, Lyle Leong. Flags on Texas, an interference, touchdown stands. 14-14 on ABC and ESPN2. Not recent here at 17-3, but Auburn's showing a little bit more life here. Yeah. They used on defense. Absolutely. They're fortunate there to get the football back. Wildcat and Reed is back to take the direct snap. Second time we've seen the play tonight. Reed is going to keep it himself. You know, when I see the Wildcat of an Auburn player, oh, I can't boy. help but think, what Big would Ronnie Bo Bruce. Jackson have done <laughs> as the Wildcat? Now, Pat Dye is not about to run the Wildcat. I know right. That, you know, right. That's, that's not Pat's style. You but imagine? I was thinking about Bo. I said, whoa. 
Second down at eight. Oh, yeah. He'd have been something now. Ronnie Brown did a pretty good job of it here. Yes, he did. And with the Miami Dolphins, we might add. Second down and eight. Play fake. Newton breaks up. Can he get the first down? Cannot. But he makes it a very manageable third down. Yeah, and I, and I think because Auburn's at least attempting to take some shots downfield, even though they haven't hit many, at least it's holding McDaniel and Hall back enough to allow Newton to have a little bit of running room. But this is going to it's going to be interesting here on third and short because Auburn's been getting pushed back a lot by Daquan Bowers in this front. Let's see if they're able to come up with something here to trick him. Sprint out, Eric Smith. Fake that handoff on third down. Going to go deep middle. Got it. Adams again. A big time gamble on third down. You and I both kind of shaking our heads and saying, oh, I don't know if this is the thing to do or not. I mean, I, it almost just looks like it's third down. It's almost as good as a punt. What the heck? Let's just throw it up and see if our big guy Adams can make a catch. Auburn very fortunate that Adams was able to adjust to the football and find it and make that play. 34 yards on it and uh, a bit of a scrum on this first down play. So Auburn inside the red zone trying to score their first touchdown of the night. You can see what Newton has done as a rusher largely ineffective as a passer except for that last grab by Adams. Three of nine tonight. 92 yards and 35 of them just turned in by Adams. So here comes second down and Dyer, the freshman, back in. Play fake, pump, Newton rolls, waits for something to break, and then he takes off. Tough hombre to bring down. A little, little indecisive there. He's got to make up his mind. He doesn't have a lot of time to sit back in that pocket and wait for things to happen. They're going to chase him down. He's got to make up his mind up and go. Let's take a look back at how specific in the red zone is being turned in here tonight by Verizon. And a field goal as now you see the substitution package by Clemson. For that fast snap again. Newton off a play. Here comes the end around. The handoff. Got the first down. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Ontario McCaleb. A good bit of running on that far side, Herbie. He had the first down. Elected not to step out. Said, I see daylight. Well, he has the speed. And the coach is telling us the last couple days about reverses in this offense aren't really a, necessarily a trick play. He said the reverse is part of our, our package. It's part of our base offense. McCaleb that time maybe fooling Clemson with that quick huddle break, quick snap at the line of scrimmage, and they get him down the sideline. Well, they're going to see if uh, maybe he stepped out of bounds. Instant replay will take a look at this. Picks up a good block by Smith. Smith does enough there with Branch. And if there is any question at all, I think it's well beyond the first down marker. Branch showing that speed again as a big defensive end. I had him inbounds. Somebody stood in front of that one step, but I think he is inbounds all the way. But let's take one more look here and make absolutely sure. The cut. Inbounds. Yeah. No yeah. question. You know, the reason this is obviously a big touchdown, by the way, their first touchdown in 73 minutes. You got to go back to the second quarter against Mississippi State the last time Auburn scored a touchdown. Got to wait a little, little bit of a hold Going there. Down the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Right. It gets this crowd back into the game. Absolutely. And they've been gone since the first drive that Clemson went down and scored in 12 plays. Now they get within a touchdown if they hit this extra point, and all of a sudden the energy fills this stadium back up. This will move them to within seven, and it will give Auburn 10 on answer. They've got just that. Now, when you come back, maybe the biggest offensive series of the night is coming up for Clemson. They must answer now. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the Capital One Cup. Log on to ESPN.com slash Capital One Cup to vote for the Capital One Cup Impact Performance of the Week. And Wrangler, for unbeatable comfort and value, you can count on Wrangler. Wrangler, real, comfortable jeans. There is Bo Jackson's Heisman Trophy. Now 
his alma mater. He'll try to hold the line. A short man on the 20 yard line, and that's Harper. And let us check in with Reese Davis. Brett, I'd like to keep our finger on the primetime pulse. You're seeing the Notre Dame-Michigan State game and Texas-Texas Tech on either ESPN2 or ABC. Irish just threw an interception deep in Michigan State territory. Now Sparty's on the move. Irish up 7-0. Texas and Texas Tech tied at 14. And on ESPNU, LSU just added another field goal. Mississippi State, four turnovers in the game. And the hat going to get a win. He's up 29-7. And Reese Boise State leads Wyoming big in the second quarter. 31 to nothing. Now first and 10 and the inside handoff here for Clemson to get started. And with this offensive line, they need to knock these big rascals from Auburn off the football. You, you and I are thinking alike. I think one of the areas that, that Auburn's been able to maybe make some adjustments is they are now attacking more and, and doing a much better job at the line of scrimmage. I think their front came into this game with some confidence, got pushed around on certain drives in the first half, but now they've come out in the second half and really asserted themselves. Dalton Freeman snaps it. But nothing doing that time. And there is a young man who is playing a great football game. A senior, Josh Bynes. He's from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And he has come alive here. And the left guard, 73, David Smith, is trying to come off a double team to get a hand on Josh Bynes. But Bynes is accelerating and coming in so quick on his reads. See how quickly he came in? The guard, Smith, didn't have a chance to come off that double team. Good job and great instincts there by Bynes. Kyle Parker. Facing a throwing situation here. Gobbles a snap, picks it up, takes off, and he is down short of the first down. And they were hacking away at that young man right there, Antoine Carter, and uh, he took a licking. Yeah, he sure on did. that play. You know, he, he recovered from. Well, let's hope he's able to come off the field here. He, you know, at the end of the play, he lowered his head and some helmets came in there on his back. You wonder if that might have been in. The snap was okay. He just dropped it, but athletic enough to pick it up, remain calm. Yep. You see that hit right there that came in a little bit late? That's the one Mike McNeil, the safety, came in, lowered his helmet right there into the into hit his back. His helmet. Yep. He stuck his helmet right at it. Oh, man. So Carr is standing back on the they're back out of it. Carr is standing back on the 20 yard line. He got Auburn's attention. Fair catch at the 27 yard line. So we'll take a break. We will check on Parker. an enormous amount of pain after taking that helmet shot in the back. You can see Mike McNeil lower his his helmet there right into the back. McNeil actually went back as well. Wildcat again. Third time tonight. They bring the receiver around for a first down and that's McCaleb and now McCaleb is becoming their most dangerous weapon here tonight. He's rushed seven times for 62 yards. This time Cody Burns in the Wildcat, the former quarterback who's now a wide receiver and Auburn's lined up in his quick huddle where they break the line of scrimmage quickly and then try to snap the ball as fast as they can before Clemson's ready for the, the formation. Newton and there's a penalty flag. He was handing off to Dyer on the move that time and uh, there's a penalty. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Zimba. Second penalty of the night. And let's check in down below with Aaron on this injury. Brent, obviously you can see Kyle Parker just gasping, doubled over. He did get the wind knocked over him. Dabo Sweeney came over to check on him and he said, I'll be fine. I'm going back in. So that's what they're saying from the Clemson Tigers sideline. He's coming back in. Kamer. It's going to take a lot to take him off this field. There's a handoff to Dyer. 
Nothing doing. Thrown down by Daquan Bowers, the junior. Mm, to see a good look at defense today. Poor A.J. Green, who's had to go up against him. 77 tries his best, but I'll tell you, Bowers is a different player. You and I called his first collegiate game when they played Alabama, and he came in with a lot of hype, the number one recruit in the nation that year. He gets off blocks fast now. He is a man, whereas two years ago, he was a pup trying to learn how to play. Now it's on changing up from the sidelines. McCaleb is the running back. Play action. Newton fires near side. First down to Adams. What a good looking receiver. Number 89 is. Uh, the last four completions now that Cam Newton's been able to come up with, all four have been going to Adams. Adams showing not only can he get downfield and adjust to a football, but how about the toughness there to take that big hit and hold on to the football? And that was DeAndre McDaniel unloading on Adams, and he's trying to shake it off. And here comes Dyer, the freshman. Jitterbug, best run from scrimmage of the night as he danced outside, and McDaniel makes another defensive play for the Tigers. Great vision and quickness. The coaches say that really at this point in his career, his greatest strength is his vision. And that time, that play's designed up the middle of the field. He cuts it out to the right and picks up some valuable yards. Newton gives it to him in a big hole on the left side. And here's the freshman from Little Rock. And now the crowd is really excited. Brent, I think it's the first time all night that we've seen the inexperience of the Clemson linebackers catching up to him. Right now, Clemson's defense on their heels, trying to make adjustments on the fly. Give it right back to the freshman. Going to keep feeding him. The young man growing up right in front of us here tonight. Let's see if Clemson's defensive line and linebackers start to put their hands on their hips. That's the goal of this Auburn offense with their tempo to try to wear down a defense. Start to see guys getting a little fatigued. That's when Auburn knows that's where they, they have it right where they want them. Dyer coming to the right. Cuts back and he gets thrown down hard. So Maxwell makes a fine defensive play for the Tigers. Byron Maxwell. You know, it's interesting. We should point out that uh, Mario Fannin has not played tonight. He was injured, didn't practice much all week, and uh, McCaleb and Dyer have been the two running backs. And number 23, McCaleb is on the field right now. Remember Cam Newton, if everything's covered, he's a real threat to pick up this first down with a scramble. They must account for number two. They're going to fire to the end zone to the corner of it. Incomplete. They said he stepped out, Adams. The official was right there on Adams and pointed right at the spot. Did not hesitate. He was all over it. His left foot came down first, not his right foot. Well, maybe with the replay, we'll look and see that his right foot may have come down. Well, but the right he's foot, looking well. at the left foot touching that line. But, it, boy, based on that replay, whoa, that right foot whoa, whoa, looked whoa, like... Hold on here. This right that, foot now. Yeah, huh? that right foot touched. I think that's that a right touchdown. Foot touched. I think that's a touchdown. Yep, I think it is, too. He's an outstanding receiver. Well, did they give him this or not? But I wasn't he dragging the toe? He, he was dragging the toe. Well, I think the replay judge for this. But I think the say. official got so caught up in that left foot coming down that he didn't think the right foot was still down when he made possession. But you can see, of course, in our slow mo replay, you can see that his right foot still was down. He held onto the football. They're going to reverse this. You're right. And this place is about to explode. It would be unbelievable, folks. So just settle back now when that announcement's going to be made. They'll take a, several looks at this just to make absolutely sure because it's a, it's a bang bang down there. There's no question on the toes. So here we are now. Watch the right toe. He's, right toe. And he's got the ball. He's got the right toe down. We think it is. Okay. We think it's down. Now secure the ball right there. Down. It's close, man. Remember, it has to be <laughs> indisputable <laughs> visual evidence. Can I tell you one thing we know for sure? Great throw by Cam Newton. It was a great throw. Back shoulder best, fade. Best throw of the Threw night. it with some authority. Stepped into some it. Some velocity. Didn't yeah. lob it. You yeah. know? He stepped in. He knew where Here to put that football. Look out now. 
After further review, the receiver did get a foot down before going out of bounds. Touchdown. talk with the head coach Gene Chislik about showing some maturity and handling adversity down 17 to 3 an extra point away from tying this game up and there we are deadlocked at 17 Cam Newton has completed only five passes tonight Darvin Adams has caught all five Telecast available in 3D on ESPN 3D. Brought to you by Sony. Fans are here at the Bud Light viewing party outside. Experiencing the latest technology firsthand. Deadlocked at 17. Auburn to kick it off. Gilchrist driven back, and he'll. Oh, he can't hesitate like that. And finally, they come down to light him up, but the official now holding everybody up to see if he got down. And they're saying they got a safety on it. Here's the line judge down there. There it is. He went in. Coming out on the 20-yard line right now. Yeah, I think they're calling this a touchback. They're signaling a touchback. Yeah, sure, it comes out yeah. on the 20-yard line. I didn't know if they might call a late hit there because Auburn's going to... They could have. ...try to come down and hit him. But, but gonna... you see, he doesn't make the signal until right here. And now when is the player hit? Meanwhile, while we're watching this, let me quickly go to Aaron Andrews. Aaron, what's the situation with Parker? Kyle Parker is in a ton of pain. He tried to throw a few warm-up passes, Brent, and he doubled over. They worked on him in a table. Tried to try to work it out on his back. Couldn't get it. He popped up when Auburn scored. Said he was back in. Gets hit on the first play and throws an incompletion. Antoine Carter was all over him as he tried to hit Bryce McNeil. What a story developing here right now with Kyle Parker, who is by far the player of the game in the first half, dealing with this injury. And now the first play after he convinces his coaches that he wants to come out and play, he's got to deal with Antoine Carter laying him down on the ground and pounding on him. Tosh Boyd has got to get ready. There is the young man. Redshirt freshman from Hampton, Virginia. We don't know how long number 11 can hold up here. Here is Ellington spreading up the middle, breaking free to daylight out to the 41-yard line. And Zach Etheridge stops him after a 21-yard gain. Great acceleration of field. Nice job in being patient by Ellington, but it's the blocks up front, not just on the defensive line, Brent, but the line got to the next level. They picked up some of the linebackers with some good blocks. And I think Ellington, when he gets into the open field, is as dangerous as anybody on this field. Now Jamie Harper comes in. He gets the handoff. He tries to cut back to the left and picks up a tough yard before Tashavon Bell, the sophomore from Kissimmee, Florida, lights him up. Well, you could just see in the body language of Kyle Parker trying to be mentally tough here, trying to block out that injury the best he can. The running game trying to help him out, take some of the pressure off of him and how much he's done in the passing game. They've got to put it up, though. Absolutely. They've got to expose him. Second down and nine. The inside handoff. Harper handing the ball off is not going to do it for Clemson. And you can almost see the anguish in his face just seeing those pictures. But I, you know, I think Brent right now, Auburn, Gene Chizik, Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, they're attacking downhill because they're not expecting run. And there's Antoine Carter, who's been putting a lot of pressure on his Clemson offensive line down. But, boy, Auburn is just pinning their ears back and just coming after the running game because they're not expecting to throw much right now from Parker. After being dominated in the first half, 
Auburn has turned this game completely around. They have come out fired up. And obviously the coaches got on them and there is a brave young man in a considerable amount of pain taking the helmet in the back and now Carter's in pain himself and he's played a good game for Auburn here down. Now here is Carter. That looks like helmet to helmet to me but uh, even my eyesight's getting bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, this, regardless, once Carter's helped off here, he looks like he's going to be okay. Good. This, this is going to be the first third down that Kyle Parker's had to deal with on third and long, an obvious passing situation, to see how he's able to hold up and stand in that pocket and show that courage and try to execute. No question, that's a stinger on the left shoulder. He has liked his tight end, Dwayne Allen. He has Brown off to his left. And you know Auburn's going to try to bring pressure. Here they come. Middle linebackers picked up in a foot race. Throws high, incomplete. Die. I want to tell you, number 17 masqueraded the blitz. Watch Bynes up the middle. And they, they, they were able to get through there, and the pressure really comes from Craig Stevens, but Brent still, even with the pressure, die at 6-5 against Washington at 5-9, and that's why Parker put the ball up into the air for his big receiver to go up and make the catch. He just floated the ball a little bit too much, not giving die much of a chance. So here we go, Irby Zimmerman again, and Carr is back for Auburn, deadlocked at 17. Time running down in quarter number three in Auburn, Alabama. Carr shaking and baking and going down. Check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Brent. Sports Center right now brought to you by Discover Rewards. Notre Dame and Michigan State tied at seven. Here's how the Spartans scored Kirk Cousins to Keyshawn Martin. You can see it on ABC or ESPN2. 17 seconds away from going to halftime in East Lansing. All right, there they're tied. They're tied down in Lubbock the last time I checked. We are deadlocked here. I mean, we got action all over the place. You need multi-receivers tonight to keep up. Meanwhile, Boise State is pulling away, and I can hear our favorite people from game day getting ready to move to the Rocky Mountains next week. Love it. Stumbling around now, McKenna. But don't, wouldn't you agree it's always been a tale of two halves? Absolutely. The way this game looked in the first half with Clemson up 17 to 3 and just dominating game. 267 yards of offense, 17 first downs. Man, if things change. Look at the second half. 14 points so far for Auburn. 181 yards. And their quarterback finally looks looks like he's playing within a rhythm. Yeah, here's Newton. Oh, look at the time he gets it. Finally hit at the end. He's got a man wide open. End zone ahead. Touchdown, Terrell Zachary, 78 yards. Brent, another double move, and it takes time, as you said, to give Newton time. A little pump and go. Finally, the pressure gets there from Rennie Moore. But Richard Hall, the safety who's chasing him, completely out of position. The corner bit it by Maxwell. Hall bit on the fake. And Zachary was just all alone down that right sideline. And the extra point is tacked on for a seven-point lead after the Zachary touchdown. And, folks, that is a story. That is the first completion of the night thrown by Cam Newton, not to Darvin Adams. Brent, here's the double move. Zachary's going to come down, give him a little move and out. The corner is Maxwell. The safety, that's the key, Hall. Hall has to be able to get back and retreat. He doesn't do it. Watch this move on the bottom here. A little move to the outside and go. He's completely fooled, but don't blame it all on Maxwell, the corner. The safety that time, Rashard Hall, needed to be back in coverage, and he didn't help his corner out at all. And big Cam Newton has shown an ability to settle down and show his head coach the toughness that he wanted to see from him after trailing in a big game with a lot of hype. He's brought this team right back. It's 
one thing to be able to get pressure on him, but at 6'6", 250, you still got to hit him and bring him down. He took that hit off the pump fake that allowed the rush man to get on him, and he bravely stood in there. That was a big-time play by Newton, and Zachary with his great move, and now you really have to wonder about Kyle Parker's health. Can you possibly come back? with him in obvious pain watching him over there. Clemson's turn. Gilchrist from the two. Gilchrist wide and out of bounds. And a reminder that Jimmy Johnson, of course, racing for that historic fifth straight championship. Unbelievable. Chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup in New Hampshire on ESPN Sunday at 1 Eastern. Remember what we thought might have been a meaningless field goal in the first half? That was the start of 24 unanswered points by this Auburn football team. And you wonder if that field goal, taking it on you know, the adjustments they made at halftime, how that may have changed this football game. But right now, the emotion of the stadium, the confidence of Auburn, Parker, even injured, is going to have to make some big plays now. Brave young man, Jamie Harper, in as the running back. They have to burn one with the clock coming down. the second time this half we've seen some confusion from the Clem Clemson uh, offense where the coaches are frustrated where they have to call the timeout. Now, there's been a lot of pressure on Parker in the second half and, and, and I think the main reason besides bringing a few blitzes and some pressure that time it was Darren Bates. And that's deep the deep big deep. hit by Mike McNeil that really has changed his game around and Clemson's attack. They've really been coming after Kyle Parker since that but I think up front Auburn has done a much better job of attacking and being more aggressive on their side of the football. But against that aggression Murphy you would agree screens draws yeah. some reverses you take advantage of yeah. these big rascals breathing fire right now you got to make some play calls here and that's when you wonder is Parker in a position physically to be able to do that he keeps telling his coaches that he is he admire his courage but you wonder how much is he handcuffed because of that hit that he endured absolutely play fake Going to put it down, field, going deep, incomplete, and penalty flag. Demon Washington with coverage downfield at the 30-yard line on Jerron Brown, and the penalty flag comes flying. Pass interference against the defense, number 14, 15 yards to the previous spot, automatic first down. Frank example where there actually isn't any contact but because of the, the positioning of Washington and the fact that the receiver went right by him that's why they called that Washington looks lost there isn't any contact at all until the ball touches the receiver's hands yeah, but there was contact here Herbie what happens watch he hangs and you know what the DB is not looking at the quarterback that's what I'm saying yeah. the fact that his head isn't turned around facing yeah, that, and looking for the ball what, that's, where, that, that's where they're gonna call it every time yeah, here comes the uh, end around motion and Harper battles into the thick of that. Yeah, he's a tough hombre here, number eight. So that was a huge penalty. One of the first good things to happen here for Clemson in the second half. Harper's body language, obviously very, very different, but at least you can see he still has the ability to get the ball thrown downfield. He threw that last pass maybe 50, 55 yards in the air. Yeah, it was. Indeed. Now he comes right back with the tough guy. Did he get the first down? Now can he get to it? Yes, he does. What a fine run. You know, there are some three-yard runs that stand out, folks. They don't have to be those flashy 50-yard runs. I mean, that was just major piece of running there by number eight to get the first. Watch, watch, watch this. Well, first, he, he's able to knock Washington down. Then 235 pounds. We've seen his hands tonight. He goes up into the air. But how about the stiff arm a little earlier against the corner who came up? Showing a little power and finesse. And Ellington replaces him, gives him a blow. So the third quarter comes to an end. 
24 unanswered points. And the home team from the SEC now leads Clemson of the ACC. Gene Chizik started as a graduate assistant under Coach Danny Ford over at Clemson. Here he is back where he orchestrated an unbeaten defense in Auburn in 2004. Won a national championship at Texas. They were unbeaten the next year. Two years at Iowa State. Learned how to be a head coach. And here he is right now with a lead as we start the fourth quarter. And Ellington sprints free. Breaks to the second level. Crosses the 30-yard line. This Auburn defensive line is slanting to our left, to the Dolphins' left, to their oh, Auburn's right. And what an outstanding job of Ellington just navigating his way through traffic. Good job again up front by that offensive line. Every time they gain yards on the ground, they're taking pressure off of Kyle Parker. And Harper comes into the game. Fakes the handoff. Goes deep. Harper going up for the ball. Incomplete. And are they keeping an eye on him now? That was Craig Stevens, the senior linebacker, back from a two-game suspension, and he picked him up all the way. And that's the wheel route that they scored a touchdown on. Harper coming out of the backfield, does a good job. Stevens actually doesn't see the ball. Harper adjusts back. He's just unable to make that catch. It would have been another great one for him tonight. Parker is 0 of 4 this half. Looking for his fifth pass of the half. High percentage completion. Slips it out to the back on the outside, and they're at the 25-yard line. Let me check that. That was Jones, the junior from Columbia, South Carolina there, number 26, who was the receiver. Auburn's defense flowing pretty good. Kyle Parker's going to be in this third down and long situation, third and six. Hand signals coming in. One hot, one dummy. Three receivers are to number 11's right. He looks left all the way, doesn't hesitate, fires close. There's a flag. Flags come flying on that reception by Xavier Dye. And we are still seeing the body language indicating this young man is playing in pain. They brought that blitz. They, man, they manned up on the outside. And Parker anticipating very well there. He threw that ball before Dye was even out of That's his cut. 26 in defense. Ball be played this final foul. First down. This is McNeil. Yeah. How about right? He throws the ball right here. And look how late you see him. Not late. He's actually the receiver's doing his job. But it just gives you an indication of how quickly that ball is out of the hands of that quarterback, Kyle Parker. Whether he's in pain or not, he still can anticipate very well. One of his great strengths. Of course, they had to see where the catch was made. Marked it at the spot. But it's a first down. Here's the toss play. Harper follows the interference beautifully. And he'll go out of bounds at the 12-yard line. They have a convoy out there. When they get this ball to the outside, Brent Landon Walker, the right tackle. Been impressed with Chad Deal, the lead blocker, the fullback. Doesn't get his hands on the ball much, but he's, he's, a, he's a guy that's willing to sacrifice to help these tailbacks out. Uh, Clemson's got to be happy they get next week off. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, you're right. You need a little rest after this one. So we are at 10 o'clock Eastern time. The Kirk Herb Street and Aaron Andrews. I'm Brent Musburger. Auburn leading, but Clemson driving. Clemson once led 17-0. Drops off that tight end and running back now. McCaleb trying to pick up a blocker. Just pounded out of bounds as Ellington was the receiver on that play. I mean, there's, there's some major league hitting going on in this game, folks. Yes, sir. This Ellington. one's not for sissies, this game. <laughs> no, not at all. But you're right. Ellington slips out again on these screens. All, or, uh, Clemson's had a lot of success doing that. High hit here by Thorpe. Got Thor, him pulled his helmet off. the helmet off his head. Let's go. Keep, 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 keep pounding it in there. Here comes the power high on first and goal. 
Ellington will step for the end zone and cross it. And they're an extra point away from a tie ball game in Auburn. What an impressive drive with everything that's been going on in this game. Auburn had scored 24 straight points. Clemson on the road. How would they handle it with an injured quarterback? Moved the ball down the field in eight plays. Get some great blocks in here by the big fullback, Chad Deal. And into the end zone. Big time drive by Clemson. Devin Zaro, the kicker. Michael Wade will put it down. And we're tied. We are tied with 12 minutes and 36 seconds to go. The SEC on ESPN and a big time game between Clemson and Auburn. We are back. Twelve and a half minutes left in regulation. A dandy at Auburn. And a quarterback showing an enormous amount of courage. They lit Kyle Parker up with a helmet to the back. And he's hanging in. Washington at the four for Auburn. Got a big alley. Maintains his balance and breaks out. Big time return to the 36. Well, a reminder, Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. Tigers against the White Sox. So that's your Sunday Night Baseball. 8 p.m. And we got a personal foul. And it's on that young man right there, Sanders. Costly well, personal foul. The way, the way this game has gone back and forth with some of the mistakes. I mean, obviously, with 12, a little under 12 and a half minutes to go, any kind of mistake, whether it's a turnover, a penalty, anything could eventually cost you this football game. Because of the good return, Auburn is still in decent position at their own 20 to start this drive. Nine penalties for 90 yards against Auburn. Okay, McCaleb is in there as the running back. And that pistol now alongside number two Cam Newton who rides him and gives it to him and McCaleb takes it outside for the first down good read option you know, ever since Cam Newton's been able to settle down after his second interception you can see four four since the second interception 138 yards two touchdowns it just seems like McCaleb is finding room Dyer is finding room and, and as much as Gus Molzahn talks about we're about running the football teams are going to try to take that away and it's almost like they have to be able to throw the football to set up the run faking it to McCaleb and Newton takes it straight ahead. Back you up on McCaleb. He has rushed for 79 yards here tonight and one touchdown. He's the leading rusher. On the other side, Ellington for Clemson has rushed for 115 yards. Remember, Herbie, early in the game when Clemson was dominating in total yards? Right now, Auburn leads 389 to 363 with this big second half. Unbelievable. Second and seven. Caleb, they got the end around working, and Clemson is not fooled. That is a big hit by McDaniel, the safety on Zachary. They read Zachary all the way. Yeah, and DeAndre McDaniel, even though he is a safety, they'll line him up like a linebacker a lot of times, and this time he's lined up right there as a linebacker, and look how quickly he reads that, Brent. That's an experienced safety, walked up close to the line of scrimmage, knowing exactly what to expect, and is able to close in on it. So now here comes the third and 14 for Newton. Checking over with Gus Malzahn on the sideline. Formation adjusted to the personnel. And in Clemson readjusts. Packers stepping up. Newton sacked. Daquan Bowers and Hawkins, the middle linebacker, bring him down. You know, it's the and now we've oh. got another injury. Looks like maybe A.J. Green is is down. You know, it's the first time this half that Daquan Bowers and this group have been able to get some pressure. You can see 99 Jenkins, a little bit of a stunt. They bring a linebacker who comes in free in Hawkins, but eventually Hawkins and Bauer, Bowers close in on him. 
Good call that time by Kevin Steele, waiting to bring, bring the pressure and getting aggressive on third down and long. I think, Herbie, that this is the hardest hitting football game we have seen this year. I think you're right. That's some major league hitting going on in this game. We've had helmets flying off from the get go. Now, Clemson, of course, has lost 13 straight to Auburn. Coached by a former Alabama wide receiver, Dabo Sweeney. And you were right about that, uh, A.J. Green, the junior out of Tennessee. Getting a lot of attention on that, that left yeah, knee. They, uh, they are looking at that leg and that ankle down there, aren't they? Pretty good. Yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna step aside. They're gonna bring the cart out for this young man. Uh, this could be a break, and uh, we'll we'll take a timeout. Bruce Davis with you in the studio. Check in on number three Boise State against Wyoming. Kellen Moore who's thrown a rare interception in this game. He's Titus Young out there for a touchdown. It's 34 nothing. They've just started the second half. And next week, Boise State will host Oregon State. The Beavers and Mike Riley just getting by Louisville 35-28. A potential game day site for Boise State and Oregon State. And Oregon just keeps clipping along, now scoring more than a point a minute. 69 nothing over Portland State. We've got another one coming your way. It ought to be a good one. Pac-10 and Big Ten. Nick Foles, quarterback for the Wildcats, getting set to take on Iowa. It's coming up next. All right, thank you very much, Reese. There's Dr. James Andrews, uh, the famed orthopedic surgeon right there who has gone on the field. Uh, obviously, we have a serious leg injury here suffered by A.J. Green, and uh, uh, as good an orthopedic man as there is in the country ha has come out there on the field, and this uh, young man is going to be carted off. Well, you know, Herbie, we're talking about the big picture and, uh, and Boise State and... <laughs> Reese, he didn't want to say that's where everybody's going. That's a potential yeah. game day site, uh, barring a miracle that's by it. the Wyoming Cowboys. I'll say it, it's lock and load. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going. We, and, you and I are going. Oh, you can't be game that, day's man. going. It's going to be great. That's a whole state of Montana. It's a home game, baby. We'll come down there. <laughs> You're loving that. <laughs> All right, well, let's hope you that, home. Meanwhile, yeah. let's hope this young man oh, yeah. uh, heals quickly. I mean, it's, uh, he's serious a fine injury. tackle for them. And, uh, you talked about Dr. Injury. Andrews. Being yes. down there, and, and how fortunate to have that kind of injury, at least have a doctor like Dan James Andrews here. No question. Very good point. And they're going to stay away from this punt. Not a good punt. And now, half a field to work with for Clemson. And so here we go. Monday night football. All right, huh? The defending Super Bowl champs. Drew Brees will take the act out to San Francisco. Monday night at 8.30 Eastern time. Who, who are you going with there? Can, can a Niners bounce back or is it a given? <laughs> I'm is, going is with the Saints. A, it's a given. Okay. I'm a play the chalk. Drew Brees, tough to ever go again. Yeah, I know. Here comes Harper. He's in as the as the eye back here. Herbie, here we go now. 10-18. Got an H back on the left side leading the way. And they pound straight ahead, and there's number 17 in the middle of things again. That Josh Bynes. I called his name all night long. I sure have. He's been slipping through, and you know, I, I think a big part of that, Brent, is the defensive line eating up a lot of the blocks, freeing up Bynes. But Bynes' instincts, he's played a lot of football in his career at Auburn, starting to really take over here in this second half, starting to read things very quickly. Second down for Parker. Delay. And that spin move, not quite as successful as it was back in the first half. Antoine Carter, who was shaking up back on the field, makes the play. And Carter's getting upfield as a pass rusher and never gives up on this play. Watch him right in the front of your screen. He's thinking pass, but instead of quitting on the play, he comes back in case of this right here, and at least he puts himself in position to make the play. That's a good job and good effort that time by Carter. Well, let's see what they want Kyle Parker to do here on third and seven. Inside of 10 minutes in regulation. Lit up by Nick Fairley.
Brett, this time fairly uses an outside move. He's been attacking to the inside. Watch this time. He does a little bit of a move to the outside, and he's just way too quick that time for Mason Cloy, a backup who's in the game right now at right guard. Watch how quick he moves right by him to the outside. Great quickness for a 300-pounder. This is not what Parker wanted to experience with that injured back. Offensive tackle aided him off the field, goes over to the bench. Carr is back for Auburn. Fair catch at the 16-yard line. Courageous young man. We'll be right back. Well, there you see number 71. He's come on to play right tackle. He's from Auburn, Alabama here. Went to Auburn High, and he is studying pre-mechanical engineering. So now he's got to engineer a couple of good blocks over there. Well, with that major, he's at least going to know what to do. Now it's just a matter of holding up against some pretty good DNs. And uh, Dyer, the freshman, back on the field. Read option. Newton keeps it. Got about eight yards before he is finally brought down on the play. And Interesting our, how we've seen a bad cam and a good cam tonight. Yeah, we have. We have. And, and now we like got Mark, Marcus Gilchrist. Gilchrist. And he was a former safety switch to corner, the return man. And now he's down. Okay. Now watch Cam. Yeah, Cam Newton early just staring down his receivers and making it pretty easy for De DeAndre McDaniel and, and company back there. This time Xavier Brewer to read his eyes and make plays. They made some adjustments. That defense is taking some risks and some chances trying to guess and try to go for that big pick. They started to make them pay for it with a little bit of pump and go. The out and up twice getting the defense to bait him. And that's what got Cam Newton fired up. Hands it off to the freshman. Dyer picks his way beautifully. Best run of the night. Out to the 40-yard line. Patient and followed his blockers. And how about Brandon May, an experienced say, uh, linebacker, 20, is right there to make the play. And you see the quickness and that vision that Dyer has. He gives him a little jump cut and a little move. And that low center of gravity, tough to bring down, gets upfield in a hurry. 64 total yards now. And they uh, split him out to the uh, bench. <laughs> I thought he was going out as a wide receiver. They had McCaleb come in late. And Cam Newton is tripped up from the back. Chavis got him. You know, Auburn's had most of their success when they've been hurrying up and trying to get Clemson on their heels. But now with seven, a little over seven minutes to go in the game, they're trying to drive and get into at least field goal range. you got to wonder, are they still trying to just put points on the board? Or they also want to try to work with the clock here, too? Dyer back in on second and eight. Now Gus Miles on over the sideline. Readjusts versus the personnel. Then it will be up to Clemson. And they stay in their base. Now they're coming. No. They stayed right in. A play fake. And Newton going to throw it in underneath. Battles for the first down. Near midfield. Eric Smith, a tough fullback. Love the call here and the adjustment by Gus Malzahn from the sideline. Right there, 32. Smith comes right out of the backfield. A good play action fake. Freezes the linebackers just long enough. And there's the effort that Brent talked about and the fight. He just would not give up on his play. DeAndre McDaniel coming in there to try to take him out of bounds. But that effort right there can fire up the rest of the offense. No question about that. Uh, they're now at midfield. They've got a first down and 10 in uh, stoppage here. Back judge came up. Want to make sure the clocks were moving. Now the play clock underway. Here comes Dyer. Spun around and uh, that'll be second down. That was Jenkins. And they're making the play defensively. Jenkins with one arm. I thought he grabbed a hold of the face mask, but maybe it's he grabbing a hold of the shoulder pad. Looks like he's grabbing a... He Looks like a horse collar to me. <laughs> Jenkins, first time we've called his name. Big fella back in the lineup. He gets, the, he gets that shoulder pad and just brings him down with that big bear claw. Second down and 10. Newton. Straight back. On the move. He's dangerous, but short of the first down, he goes down. 
Well, they emphasized all week in practice he had to get down rather than take an enormous punishment. Brett, watch five in the middle. Your guy Michael Dyer and the effort he gives downfield with a little bit of a block, enough to just slow down the pressure that was trying to swarm towards him. That time it was Brown, the defensive end, and gave him a little bit more room to work to get this to third and manageable at third and two. Newton is very dangerous, as you pointed out in the first half. When you get into third and two, and this big rascal, who is 6'6", can take off, they just have to account for him. Play clock is down to two, and they're going to have to burn one. So we will take a break here. When you come back, we'll have 5-10 left and a dandy tied at 24. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by the new Ford Edge. The world has never seen a crossover quite like this. Well, there is Scott's Tissue's favorite corner. And oh, how they want to see that tree draped in white here tonight. They celebrate victory. They're a tumor's corner to have for years. Alumni, students. All right, but Caleb's up now. Remember, this is a third down and two. And Newton is banged, and he's not going to get it. Boy, there's another entry, another player down for Clemson. He's going to get up. But Brent, the, the play on third and two, you've got a defense that obviously has their eyes on the quarterback. You've got to be aggressive with the play call and aggressive with your decision making. That was too slow developing that time by Cam Newton. Sensibile, incidentally, was the player shaken up, went off that sideline. Uh, so now remember, they lose a couple yards. Remember, this is a fourth down at four now. And there's a little bit of uh, confusion. And once, once Chizik understood that it wasn't a fourth and two, he got his punter out there. I was surprised that they were going to go for it. And uh, let's just make absolutely certain here that Shoemaker does follow through with his punt. But I wouldn't think they'd want to give Clemson that field position if they didn't pick the first down up. But let's see what they do here on this snap. And a fair catch is signaled at the nine yard line as we send you to Reese Davis in the studio Reese Brent what a finish in the San Diego State Missouri game Aztecs up by four just over a minute to go a little quick out from Blaine Gabbert to TJ Moe hey Moe nobody home no Aztecs there final play just happened time has expired and Mizzou pulls one away 27-24 as soon as we're finished in Auburn, we'll take you to the desert. Ricky Stanzi and the Hawkeyes in the top ten, but going on the road to take on Arizona. It's coming up next. That'll be a dandy, Reese. Looking forward to that. And, of course, big win for Mizzou pulling that out. And here now in our tie game, there will be Clemson with Andre Ellington as the running back. Gets the first carry, slashes through, big gaping hole out to the 22-yard line. You know, Brent, Andre Ellington has a reputation for being the quick back and Jamie Harper the power back. But watch him go right through the arm tackles here. Ellington runs, goes right through Antoine Carter, who's got his right arm in the way. And just as soon as he hit the ground, Davo Sweeney signaled, hurry up. And here they came with Ellington over on the sideline. Every coach, every coach wound it up. Almost fielded Dabo Sweeney and Brad Scott, the offensive line coach, challenging the offensive line to take control of things up front. Now Harper comes in. He'll be the running back instead of Ellington. Second down and three. Bangs for the first. Couldn't get it. This will be third down and short. And Goggins, Michael Goggins with the defensive play. And Ellington kind of has that reputation of being a speed guy. And the, the luxury of having Ellington and, and Harper together is they can come in and keep each other fresh. But they definitely bring something a little bit different to that backfield. Third down and one. The ISO power eye look. Auburn knew it. 
still let Harper out to the 40. Out to the 47 yard line. We could have some tired players <laughs> on this field right now. Brett third in short and Auburn put 10 guys close to the line of scrimmage with the exception of the safety Zach Etheridge and he was slow to move over to his left to be able to get there and again I think Auburn at times underestimating the speed of the big fella Jamie Harper 74 snaps by Clemson to 55 for Auburn this Auburn defense has been on the field a ton here tonight they cut back with Ellington off the bench the new storm. The old Hello. days of thunder and lightning. These two fellows are good looking I'm, running backs. I was going to say, I'm buying into the new storm. I love the look of these two. And it is very different from James Davis and CJ Spiller, but I think you look at what they both bring to the table their attitude, the aggression, and the way they play. You got to love it if you're a Clemson fan. Harper now will watch this second down and eight. Bring the receiver through. Double reverse. Come back around the other side with McNeil. And got back to the line of scrimmage. A little short of it, actually. Kind of a surprising call there with the way Clemson's been moving the ball down the field and Agreed. just kind of attacking and attacking. Very slow, methodical play there. And plenty of time for Auburn's defense to read that and adjust uh, on a fly. Here's third and nine. Crowd roaring. Carter about to hit him. He's got a wide open. Incomplete. Intended for Dwayne Allen, the sophomore tight end. And Kyle Parker hung in as Carter was closing in. Yeah, they're closing in, but there's some major confusion here with the route that Clemson called. The safety, Etheridge, actually came up and bit on Dwayne Allen. Dwayne Allen comes down to the side. There's nobody there to pick him up. I beg your pardon. It was Jerron Brown who moved to the inside, and Auburn's defense went with him. He was all alone, just streaking right down the right sideline. Now, Carr is back deep, and here's Zimmerman. Remember, Auburn has a terrific kicker. Fielded on the seven. Cuts it back to the 12, and we go quickly to Reese. All right, Brett, want to get you up to date on what's happening on the banks of the old Red Cedar. The freshman running back that Lou Holtz told you to watch out for, Le'Veon Bell going in for Sparty. Michigan State on top of Notre Dame on ABC and ESPN2, 21-14. And Adrian Claiborne getting set to go for Iowa. Iowa and Arizona kick off in about eight minutes. You can see it after Auburn and Clemson. And here, Reese, we have 123 left in regulation with the game tied. Michael Dyer has checked back in with Cam Newton. Here's Dyer. Slipped the first tackle, but not the second. And he is driven down, and this will be second down. Auburn with two timeouts, 1-12 to go. And, of course, Wes Byram, the kicker, would love to get a crack at it, but they're going to need to pick up a lot of yards here. You Byram warming up. You don't really sense the urgency at all right now from Auburn's offense so deep in their own territory with as little of a time that they have, a little under a minute to go in this game. Clemson, and if you didn't know better, you would think that Auburn is playing for overtime. Yeah, I think they are. Not everyone in this crowd happy about that. Shizik has decided that he doesn't want to risk an interception down there or a turnover, and certainly that's his decision with the final seconds ticking away. And that young man, uh, this is some performance playing in all that pain after he took a helmet to the back when he was forced to run up the middle of the field. Surprised Clemson didn't use a timeout to try to force him to try to execute on third down and then maybe have a chance at Agreed. maybe trying to block a, a punt or at least maybe having the punter shank one. Are you taking that timeout back to Clemson? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, 30, 
Yeah, I think you're right. Though. I think Gene Chizik, you know, with a young quarterback as far as playing experience at Cam Newton, he's made some great plays. He's put the ball on the ground and made some mistakes. And deep in your own territory, the odds of moving down the field and getting into field goal range aren't that great. So is it worth the risk with an offense that has a tendency to implode? He'd rather take his chances and get into overtime. So, Clemson and Auburn are about to head to OT. <laughs> Love it. We had OT this time. year. We haven't Any, had OT. No, we year. haven't. Anytime you can kick up your Arizona, feet. Arizona, Oregon was our last. I think you're right. Huh? I think you're right. The crowd celebrated early and came on the field down in Tucson, right? I remember it well. That was a great Jeremiah game. Jeremiah Masoli. You know, I saw somebody in an old Miss uniform look just like Masoli today. You, you don't suppose? Another tough outing <laughs> for the old Miss. Oh, the old Miss not doing it, man. Hell, I'm like, we didn't have Monster Saturday, but you can kick up your feet at noon Eastern and watch college football at one or two in the morning with Iowa and Arizona coming on next. Life is good. Absolutely. So bring it on. Let's go to OT. This one's been so good. No sudden deaths when the colleges play. Each team will get a crack at a victory. Reese Davis with you, the primetime pulse from the family of networks on ABC or ESPN2. Michigan State's taking a seven-point lead on Notre Dame on Le'Veon Bell's touchdown. Irish on the move at the moment. Others are seeing Texas and Texas Tech turnover fest for a large part, but the Longhorns holding on to a three-point lead in Lubbock. We've got overtime on the Plains, Brent. It's been a good one. Dabo Sweeney and Clemson, of course, win the toss. 99.9% they'll say defense. They want to know what that first team does. One possession each now from the opponent's 25-yard line. No game clock, but there is a play clock. And with the third overtime, everybody's got to go for two. We've noted that a couple coaches who have scored in that second overtime have gone right away for two. So we'll see how that strategy unfolds here tonight. I think Kyle Parker's best performance, probably as a starting quarterback, was a other, another overtime game. Went down to Miami and took on the Hurricanes. Big underdogs that day as well. Found a way to win that game in overtime when Kyle Parker threw a touchdown in the first overtime to beat the Canes. Right after this, of course, it's Iowa, Arizona out there in Tucson. That's the only game this week, I think, between two ranked teams. Do I get that right? You're exactly right. Big time, Big Ten, Pac-10 showdown. Oh, man. I, I feel so much oh, for that yeah, young man. Yeah. I mean, he was hit fairly early in the second half. We started this broadcast marveling at his ability to be the first player in the history of Division I football to have 20 touchdown passes and 20 home runs as a first round draft pick. Now we're marveling at his toughness, mental and physical toughness. Right, he's Clemson, showing it's your choice. That's a head, that's a tail. I'll flip it and whoever wins it, then we'll talk about the choices, okay? So you call it in the air. That is a head. You wanna be on defense first. You wanna be on defense. Which end of the field do you wanna play on? Get in front of that student section. <laughs> play down there. Right, you got you that right. There. Not about that. <laughs> Let's go down there and make a little bit of noise. Clemson won the toss and chose defense. It'll be Auburn's ball. First and ten on the 25. So there you have it. It will be Cam Newton and Auburn. They had 420 yards of offense to Clemson's 397. Newton threw for 200 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. Parker's thrown for 215, with a couple of touchdowns, and no picks. But he has been fairly ineffective since taking that major hit to the back. So Davo Sweeney trying to fire up the defensive troops here. You have to give an advantage if it comes down to field goals when you to, to Auburn with best West Byram as a senior and, and then you know for Clemson they have the freshman. I agree. Who has By one, Byram's one of the better Byram kickers in the SEC. Been now. around started for four years. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Zaro as a freshman has one attempt in his career so far. So if it comes down to field goals big advantage there for yeah. Auburn. Remember, Byron was the guy that beat Florida in, what was it, 2000 and, uh, was it seven down in Gainesville as a freshman? And you go back to uh, K 
Cannizzaro back in the first half. Remember, though, he hit that 42 yeah, yard tonight. That's right. Yep. So make it 10 nothing. Yep. Let's see what big Cam Newton has in this Auburn offense. Here we go from the 25 now. Caleb will start as he is back. Right next one, 23. And Newton will keep it himself to about the 23 yard line. And Brandon Thompson you know, there defensively. Brent, on a sticky night like this, game starts to go through four quarters into overtime. Fatigue, the wear and tear of a football game starts to really show up, especially in the trenches. We've been talking a lot about the toughness of the quarterback, Kyle Parker. In the trenches, who's going to be able to win this battle? Wildcat formation coming up right now. Burns, former quarterback, hands off to McCaleb. McCaleb trying to come around the corner, and he takes a lick. They're just hitting and hitting some more. That was Maxwell who delivered that blow. <laughs> now, you got to remember, McCaleb, he's running hard, but he's a 170-pound true sophomore. And Maxwell's a senior at about 208 pounds, and he gets a running start right there and knocks him out. Wow. And suddenly, this is a major down for Auburn's offense here. Well, he and, did uh, hit. He him. still he did hit. Out on the sideline, Dyer, the freshman, ready to come in. He's got his helmet on, of course. He's at the ready over on the sideline. And uh, I'm telling you, we this this is some tough football game. This is this is buckle up. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Make sure mouthpieces are in. Everything's in place. We've had guys on the sideline rolled up on on this I you know no one's safe I'm glad we're up here Herbie <laughs> make sure he is okay down there I mean and this poor guy he's been woozy you know well, that, that's been his look on the sideline it has since, been ever since, since he got since hit, hit in early in the second half Brent you're right this is a big third down not just for the conversion but to potentially for a field goal here where where's how far out will they be for Eric Smith, who tends to be a pass blocker, they're going to have Newton throw it. Fires in zone. Dive incomplete. Went for Adams, his go to guy, number 89. And now they're going to have to kick the field goal. This is great coverage by the backup corner. The junior sends some ball stride for stride there. He went to his go to guy, Adams, who's been making all the catches. But good coverage. This is right about 39 yards now for West Byram, the senior from Fort Lauderdale. Closing in on some career records here at Auburn. From the right hash. Got it long enough. And he puts Auburn up by three. Touchdown by Clemson will win it. Let's go to Reese Davis. Brent, as soon as you guys are through, everybody will see Iowa and Arizona. It's on ESPN3.com right now. This is the first possession of the game. Ricky Stanzi throwing on third down, and he misses his intended target, McNutt. And the Hawkeyes will go three and out. As soon as we finish it over time in Auburn, we'll take you to Tucson. All right, Reese, as that one's underway, and here comes Kyle Parker. And he will bring Andre Ellington. into the teeth of the student body. Play fake. Throw it. Just short of the 20 yard line. That pass completed to Brown. Moving him out of the pocket away from potential danger there. He is still limping around. I think as this game goes on, Brent, I think it's getting worse for Kyle Parker. I think the pain is getting more severe that he's trying to block out because before he was grimacing. Now it's a noticeable limp out on the field. Parker straight back drops off a screen. Here's Ellington breaks short of the 10 yard line and that was a good tackle by Bynes. Man. 
Hines has been all over tonight. He has, and this time he's lucky he's able to come up with his play. Look at Parker, despite the injury, waits to the last second before he goes to the screen. And here they come again. They've been in his face all day, fairly close to a, a late hit on the quarterback. Inside the 15-yard line with a first and 10. Touchdown wins it. Here's the handoff, Ellington. Washington makes the stop. Another player down for Clemson. It's like the attrition in this game has been unbelievable. That's David Smith, the left guard down. Number 73, we've already had a lineman taken off on a cart. Yeah. So uh, while we have a moment, Herbie, let's look ahead. And we are going to Boise. Not only that, bring along the game day crowd. Saddle up, Chris, the coach, Desmond, Aaron. You're going to the great state of Idaho. Game day, and then that night, Oregon State and Boise State. A lot of folks, uh, a lot of chatter, a lot of chatter by guys saying, well, they don't deserve. Bop, 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 bop. Well, let's find out. Yeah, let's, gonna play. Let, you, let's you just play. And, you and I saw them the opening night against yeah, Virginia Tech. They look pretty, they look pretty good to us. Let's see what they could do against Oregon and State. Don't sleep on Oregon State. No, great, no, no. Great athletic ability. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's just see. Everybody yeah. tune in. See, I know Virginia Tech lost, hurt them, whatever. But what about what about the 52 that Nevada put on California? Anybody watching that? <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> hey, uh, let's check in now with uh, Reese as the young man's being tended to, Reese. All right, Brent, we show you Iowa near three and out. Here's the first punt of the game, and the Wildcats of Arizona storm through the block punt, and they're set up on the doorstep as Mike Stoops' team off to a great start, and it is rocking in Tucson. It's on ESPN3.com. We'll get you there in a bit. Dane Chris has just thrown a touchdown pass to Theo Reddick. Some seeing that on ABC or ESPN2. Notre Dame and Michigan State tied at 21 inside 90 seconds to go in the third quarter. Reese, this is some night Are you kidding in, uh, me? in college football. Let's uh, let's take a deep breath here and think of it. Longhorns up three. Uh, we're in overtime here, and unfortunately, uh, the card has been called out for another young man in, in hardest hitting football game we we certainly have seen this year. Uh, I mean, there's some major league pounding going on in this game. And I think it's a combination of having a lot of speed along with both teams desperately need to win this game to kind of help define their season this year. I want to thank the two SIDs, the two of the best in the country mm -hmm. at Clemson and, uh, and here at Auburn. Timmy Beret, right over from Notre Dame, okay? He does a great job over there at Clemson. And here, Kirk Sampson Absolutely. took good care of us, and uh, we, we thank both the staffs. Had a nice, nice sandwich for us. Ooh. I thought it was nice. Yes, indeed. At the well, we got another young man we're going to be pulling for, Herbie. We, uh, see that. There's we now have lost a, a lineman on, uh, on both sides. This is David Smith again we're going out, and uh, A.J. Green earlier. And I know that David's got some relatives back there in the Greenville, South Carolina area. Watching and uh, we got great medical attention as Dr. James Andrews uh, out there with with both teams, and we take a look at the Associated Press top ten and uh, Alabama put 62, one going away with Ingram returning. Uh, the Buckeyes didn't break break a sweat either, and Boise State with a big lead and. Uh, that'll be our Saturday night feature on ABC, Oregon State, Boise State, there's TCU and Oregon. Herbie? Why, why do you think when we talk about the non-automatic qualifier, nobody brings up TCU? Good point. You notice that? I mean, it's yeah. always about Boise yeah. State and the attention that that Virginia Tech game, uh, I think, gave them. But boy, nice wave there. You yeah, said yeah. wave to the fans. That's a tough break there. Let's check in again with Reese Davis. Reese? All right, Brent, I want to show you how Arizona paid off that block punt. Nick Foles to David Douglas. That's a tough catch. Ball was a tad behind him. First touchdown of the night. Again, you'll take, you'll see it just as soon as Auburn and Clemson are done here on ESPN. 
And Reese uh, uh, Foles, I think Herbie would agree with me, is probably one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the country. We we saw him last year. Uh, he's a good player. Well, Foles is great. He's got an outstanding group, top to bottom, of wide receivers, led by Jerron Kreiner. A good back and Nick Grigsby. I think, uh, Iowa's only chance of winning that game is their front four. With, with uh, Adrian Claiborne, they're going to have to get things done. This is just an oh, amazing yeah. performance by a young man, Kyle Parker. Wow. Uh, remember, again, he's been drafted. He signed with the Colorado Rockies. And um, he, he, he took a major blow on the back with a helmet. And, and the teammates just propping him up as, as one of his linemen heads off. And again now... If you just joined us, we're going to go right to the Arizona-Iowa game just as soon as we finish. We are in overtime in Auburn. And Auburn settled for a field goal. And now, on a second and five, the young man in agony, Kyle Parker, brings the offense back out. Touchdown would win it. Ellington's his running back. Slants off to the left, and he's brought down at the line of scrimmage by Etheridge. Look, Ellington fighting for extra yards there, Brent. Because he wasn't able to move the ball from his right to his left, he had some contact from the secondary, and he's fortunate he was able to hold on to that football. Here's Jamie Harper. He is a great receiver out of the backfield, but can the offensive line hold up? Fake, they run him out, throw end zone, Boom! dropped in the end zone, incomplete. Took a crack at it with Brown. Parker thought he had it. Tough. Now they'll kick the field goals to tie it, I Brent, believe. Kyle Parker clearly feeling this pain. I mean, not only by the, the way he's acting, this is a throw that Kyle, Mar Kyle Parker has made his entire career. He had a wide open receiver in the back of the end zone for the touchdown to Brown. And his momentum carrying him to the sideline, he just threw it off a little bit too much to the right. Now the young kicker. Catanzaro for the tie from the left hash. And he slaps it through. I think there was a some movement there. I don't, I don't know if it was on Auburn or Clemson. Hold on. They're going to call on Auburn. It's on the defense. Oh, a major mistake. If this gives them a first down, obviously they're going to take the penalty. There's movement right in the middle. Yeah, you saw it. Yeah. You said it right away. There's yeah. movement down there. Well, I, I like how they're coming together. This is a, such an important call. It's great to see these officials taking their time. Sort it out. You know, I know Arizona and Iowa fans are ready to move on, but sort this out as a group. Talk it out and, and make the call. Remember, it was fourth and five, we were told. We had an illegal snap against the offense. There's no play. Uh, that's me. That means maybe some movement of the football from the the long snapper there that caused Auburn to actually Let's move. See the long snap. Did see he move? He moves the football up. No that's question. Great, great call by the umpire. No question. Great call. The preliminary call was going to be offsides on right. Auburn until they got together. That's and a great job. This is what you said. They huddled it up. Great job. They got it right. There is no doubt about that movement by Matt Skinner, the long snapper. So Catanzaro from that left hash now for a 26-yarder for a tie. Auburn wins it in overtime.
felt that penalty when he hit it right down the middle. By the long snapper. Cam Newton excited and he's able to fight, get his football team back in his game. And here's a guy that left everything he had literally on his football field. As gutty a performance as you will ever see. And he comes up short in overtime. Let's go now to Aaron Andrews with a very happy coach. Very happy, but very calm right now, Brent. First of all, coach, let me ask you your reaction when you saw the flag thrown there on that illegal snap. Well, we thought he kind of double clutched the ball, so we were hoping they would reverse that. Thank God they did, and they saw they did a good job seeing, seeing what was going on in there. You told us yesterday this game would be a measuring stick for your team. How did they grade out tonight? Well, I'm going to tell you what, we're blessed, man. This was a God thing tonight now. I'm going to tell you, our guys kept hanging in there, kept fighting. We told them, don't believe in the imposters in the game. A lot of good and bad things are going to happen. Just keep playing in the end. We'll have a chance to win it. You told us you needed to make an adjustment on the offense coming out in the second half. What was the biggest one that was made in your mind? Well, you know, early on in the game right now, there was a lot of things that we hadn't seen in the first two games, which is what we expected. Hey, offensively and defensively, we've made some great adjustments right now. We knew this is a big play offense. We had to get some big plays in there. It was a, a story of two different cams here. What did you see out of him in the second half that you didn't in the first? Well, one of the things I always talk to Cam about is I don't care who you are when it's good. I care who you are when it's bad. And tonight he showed who it was when he was bad. Thank you so much, Coach. Let me ask you, your coach had told us at halftime, this is a game you're going to learn about yourself. What did you learn in the second half? That this team is resilient, and we're not going to give up for nothing. You know, we were facing so much adversity, but we got we stuck together and, and, and bonded at the end. You know, there's some warriors on this team, and we're just going to have to stick together and keep fighting. What's the biggest adjustment you made personally in the second half, Cam? Oh, I really didn't make no, any of the adjustments. You know, we had an a, a excellent game plan going in. We just had to stay focused and stick to our game plan and execute. Finally, describe how physical this game was tonight. Put it in words. Oh, uh, you know, it, you know, that's sort of uh, Coach Trooper, the main thing was, you know, it's going to be physical. You know, we came out and tried to pace these guys. An uh, excellent team in Clemson. And we, we, we give our hands to Clemson and everything. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. All right, Brian. All right, Aaron, thank you. 27-24, overtime, Auburn wins it. Coming up next now, it's Iowa and Arizona. Next week, you'll find us on ABC Saturday Night Football. Oregon State will take on Boise State. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Kirk Herb Street, Aaron Andrews and our entire crew, I'm Brett Musburger. Let's send you now out to Tucson.